welcome to another Monday Night Gaming. I'm your host, Chris Sheriff. Joining me on the desk as always, Calvin Wong. Recording? Yeah, we'll start recording. Good shake, Calvin. Well done. <laughs> yes, we actually don't have to do the direct upload. I hope you all liked the fancy little uh, intro video we did there. It's, uh, yeah, a aren't we work. special? Yeah. All right, so first up, uh, Fantasy Flight re released, very important. Tournament information. Yeah, the OP team put out a few articles today, so we'll just get all of that out of the way, I suppose. So. Yeah, just uh, we'll chat about it a little bit. Um, intentional draws are going away for X Wing. Along with all draws. And along with all draws. So it will affect all games that feature a single Swiss match. And that will so, include yeah. uh, X-Wing and Armada. X-Wing, Imperial Assault, um, I believe Netrunner and LCG Yeah, some of their are LCGs the are because, uh, best, best of two. two. I can't remember if Game of Thrones works. I think that's best of one as well, but I've not played a Game of Thrones tournament for a while. I believe I Game of Thrones of is best of one, so it will probably go away with that. Yep. Um, but, so. well, FFG listened. They're like, okay, you don't like intentional draws. We'll find a get way to a way to get rid of them. Yeah. So, um, um, I guess we can put a lid on this. This tub of worms. <laughs> put it away. It's gone. Put it away. No, I'm pretty happy that it's being sorted out. I don't really mind the solution. Yeah. Um, hope that they look at the overall tournament structure for X Wing especially, just to see. I, I, I'd expect them to go with initiative in the same way as they do in the cut because mm -hmm. they've already got a system yep. and it works. So I would assume that they it? would adapt it. I honestly would like to see the, the removal of modified wins entirely, but no matter what system there is, eventually someone will be on the wrong side of it and someone will be upset. Yeah, just make sure that when we do, uh, do change it, we're not as uh, hostile to each other this time around. Mm -hmm. And it should be all okay. So, I suppose we should go on to the, the real part of the show. Get yeah, into the I think we've spent more than enough airtime over the past few weeks on the intentional draws. Yeah, so I just need to finish tidying up because Aaron didn't actually send me his worst because he hates me. Yeah, so, he does. Yeah. So I'm just going to finish tidying up the, uh, the overlay a little bit and then we can throw it over. As advertised, today is Paul Bass's day. Yeah. We are dealing with the classic here. We've got Vader with all, all loaded up with VI, Fell, and just your basic Omicron group with yeah. Palpatine. So it the is alpha worth alpha. mentioning that Rich is a new player. I believe he's only been playing for um, is it three weeks now? three weeks and he jumped straight in to uh, Palpatine Aces because you know he hates himself and wanted a challenge and not only does oh, he have yes, this list he right. also owns the triple jump masters already mm. yeah so that is a very quick jump to tournament level lists <laughs> you could say I'm the jump master yeah we could we're not going to <laughs> and we've got Aaron with his own attempt at a Aces based build, but this one is Scum and it's Dengar. Yeah. Um, so, whenever you guys are ready, we want to jump onto Asteroids and yep. we'll uh, start the You can go ahead and start you. placement. We've already got you on stream here. I cannot see. Uh, I've not opened Twitch chat on this yet, so you'll have to keep an eye on that for me for now. Nothing going yet. Timer's off because I moved it. Turn the dice come off for now as well. <laughs> yes, please. Um, if you Use the one near you and pull out any result that is not a uh, positive result. So yeah. basically, any blanks or unconverted focuses, just pull them. Yeah. Or if you want to roll on the table, just make sure you put the positive results into it so it can keep track. Yeah. Um, what I like about Aaron's build here is 
It's a very cunning way to try and get a little extra action economy, even if uh, his ships get bumped because of that mind link. Yeah. Although popping Glitter Stim can mess with him, the fact that Dengar has a fantastic amount of green on his dial actually helps a lot. Especially since he knows before he knows beforehand when he's going to need to get rid of it. Yeah. Because so, he's there are lots of options with it. I know I really like Mind Link. I've been waiting for someone to do some funky stuff with it, so And this is a fairly credible attempt at it. I like it. Yeah. I mean the yeah. IG can grab a Koyagrin and then Dengar can just turn left. <laughs> and it's all good. And the IG will still have a focus, courtesy of Dengar. While picking up a target lock from the K4, which is honestly what I like about this. Yeah. It does fun things. But it does. Okay. So... As I said, I'm going to say it once more, just so that Calvin's not too mean. You know, Rich is a new player, <laughs> so when we're uh, insulting him for being terrible... Oh, well, he did beat me last week. Well, when did we play? Is it last, last, Thursday. last Thursday, yeah. Crushed me. Crushed me. No, showed me no mercy with his Palpatine aces. I hit a lot of your Australian Yeah, I tried to take... Um, an Inquisitor that was far too expensive with um, Hell Runner and three blacks with crack. And, I see. Um, it just. Well, I disappointed myself with my um, my flying of the biscuit wheel of Tie Fighters. I've not done it in a while. Well, you told me he's uh, got a background in competitive war machine, and jumping from one competitive game to another sometimes the learning curve is a little shortened. Yeah. I mean, I think his first couple of games were with the U-Boats. And I was chatting with him on Facebook on the way down to Montana. I went to an Imperial Assault stuff down there. He was saying that he was already seeing how repetitive the West was and mm -hmm. wanted to try something where he actually had to fly the ships a little bit harder. Um, so I feel it's, it's a good West for that style of play. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this uh, rock placement? There's quite a few bits of open table for both players. So. It's mostly across on Aaron's side of the board, so it's going to be on Aaron to dictate the range of the engagement. Yeah. If he does not want to engage in it, well, then he doesn't. Judge. Then he'll be able to shoot past it. And it looks like Aaron does indeed have the initiative as Dengar is placed before Fel. So just as a, a second FYI, uh, Calvin will be replying through my Dice Hate Twitch channel. So anything that's Dice Hate will be coming from Calvin. Anything that's Sentry Box will be coming from me. Unless I end up playing later on because we don't have enough players. In which case, Calvin will be flying solo. So it goes. Looks like I can actually have the scoreboard on from the start for a change. Yeah, because they're not inexplicably constantly trying to fly on that side of the board for what. Yeah. All right, so and no we've got the ship. Yeah. yeah, and let us know what you think about this new dice cam. I'm not 100% sold on it just yet, so we're looking at a different style of dice tower. I think we can get in a little bit closer to a dice, so hopefully they're more readable for you. If I'm watching at home. Indeed. So, we've got Fel and Vader deployed quite close together, and the two scum pilots set up to spread out very quickly and allow Dengar to turn left into the board very early on. Don't know how experienced Rich is again. Well, obviously, not very, because he won't be very experienced against anything. Just yet? Okay. So, Aaron's just telling us he has played against this West before, so... So he at least will have an understanding of no, the how basics. How annoying the robot's going to be. Yes. They are very, very irritating to deal with from time to time. 
I forgot to get the arrive on her sign as well, so I can't wave it at people when they come over to annoy us today. <laughs> Text Greg to bring it up. Conservative opening. Yep, because of the low damage of this version of the Imperial Aces, uh, they're generally forced to try and focus fire a fair bit of the time against two tanky ships. But if he does go for it and chase down Dengar, Dengar will be kicking out a lot of shots while IG, while the IG is free to come in from the side. There you go, there's Aaron teaching him about not getting actions when you forget. Mm -hmm. No mercy in this game, especially when Rich wants to uh, come to regionals. We've not convinced him to get a ticket just yet. But everybody wants that hero card, just to make the Dash Rendar look better. <laughs> Derp Rendar. Dash the Chin Rendar. Now, because the engagement is going to be in the middle of those asteroids, it's going to be... Potentially tricky. I'm expecting IG to come around and cover a massive swerve of that table with its HLC arc. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, grabbing a hard two will give the IG a ton of space to threaten with its, uh, with its HLC with the option for the boost in. Mm. But. And it's whether Dengar wants to sweep around those rocks or risk trying to thread the needle through uh, through that moustache rock and the big one in the centre. Yeah, because of the angles of things and the way the moving through asteroids works, uh, it's very it's surprisingly easy for a jump master to try and thread those narrow corridors simply because the dial is so absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you do have the benefit of obviously that barrel roll to shift your centre line if you're worried too much. Yeah. But even then, I don't feel like in this matchup especially, even if he has to shoot over one asteroid, it's not going to hurt him too much. Yeah. The main thing is that uh, because of K4, if he wants a good action economy on that first round of engage, he's going to have to be fairly aggressive. Yeah. Looks like Aaron is going to be playing this turn a little more conservative as he's grabbing a bank with the IG. And that indicates to me he's not actually going to be particularly aggressive with Dengar. Yeah, he's not committing because, too hard just yet. So obviously yeah. if those aces did come across. Yep. Yeah. The turns are always going to be slower than the straights for a tie. Because the ties are always able to grab those five forwards, but they're never only go going to do more than a three. Yeah. Now... Because of the positioning, Vader probably is not going to grab a 5 forward because that rock is very awkwardly placed for him. Unless Fel also jumps 5 forward and gets past the rock. Yeah. So we see the uh, yeah. tiny mind link coming into play there, giving Dengar a double focus. Yep. Which is going to help with the uh, second shot for nice we get in the guys in arc there. Uh, it's quite possible that Rich has not come across that trick yet, the self bump, yeah. or it hasn't occurred, or he just forgot about it. As we have noted, he's been playing less than a month. Yeah, I think he's still in single figures for games played. Yeah. So Fell is being very aggressive here. So. Now, if that pushes him out of the HLC arc, it could be safe for him to just token up and exchange fire with Dengar, but Dengar can hit pretty hard if you let him. Yeah. It's just that he doesn't have that target lock at least this turn. So. I don't think he's going to be able to get now a, is a good turn, arc from this relatively. Uh, from the IG? Looks like he's gotten out of the IG, but... Yeah. Yeah. That's... Even the barrel roll and yeah. the back corner is probably going to get clipped by that arc. Again, the angle is sometimes deceptive, so yep. we can never be 100% sure. Yeah. 
So he's going for it anyway. So he's going to have a focus token. Hopefully Palpatine will keep him in the game. Yeah. The thing he does not want to do is just trade range one fire with Dengar so much. Oh, so he is quite obviously still in arc. Uh. Yeah. Again, maybe he needed to clear the space for Vader. Yep. That is the downside because if Vader wants to barrel roll and boost in, then he would have had to, but that does not appear to be what he's done. Vader has gone for an arc to try and just deny the IG for a turn. Yeah. It just looks about right. Yep. Get the boost in now, get the tag lock established. Yep. And one good thing that this does is. Dengar is no longer turning left into the fight. Yeah, that's true. Having, uh, yeah, and so Rich, the other list Rich has flown is the three jump masters, so hopefully he's familiar enough with that dial to. Yep. Uh, this is where the conservatism with the IG can hurt when the, Imper when the other player decides to just go in push all the chips into the center of the table and go straight for the other ship. Yeah. Because now he's only ex now the two heavy hitters of the Imperial list are exchanging fire with the one ship. And the IG looks almost completely out of it. So Vader shot. Yeah. So, just get any confirmations of what the different attacks are. Yep. And how the mechanics of these ships work. Yeah. So, this is a good time to actually point out that, you know, you actually have to tell your opponent what you have. You're, it's in the rule book that you are allowed to reference in game material at any point. Yep. So don't be a douchebag and uh, yes. not tell your opponent if they ask. There is no hidden information in this game. Yeah, all they have to do is call a judge and then the judge can look at your cards and then tell them what it does. And then the judge will probably smack you upside the head for being a dick. <laughs> Now it looks to me like IG is going to be simply be out of this fight, so... I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, he's trying to decide whether he wants to shoot at Dengar with Vader or not. Um. Frankly, at that range, I probably would have just to bait out the shot, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah, so he's, he's going to make that crack back at some point. Might as well do it at, a at yeah, something so. that's a little tankier. Oh, yeah, sure. No, and so, so Dengar is shooting first here, and. That's three. Like three hits. Yep. There's a good solid crack at him. Because he's in arc at less than range three, that is not going to be auto thrusters. And frankly, I would have taken the shot with Vader because you want him to shoot Vader right now. Yeah. Because Fell's only got one token. Yeah, just lift him in if you want. Yeah, just put him in. Yeah. I don't know, maybe Palpatine would have been the right option. It depends how the dice fall, obviously. Yep. So no hits. So if you're going to shoot with Fel, there was no point not shooting with Vader. Exactly. Yeah. We'll That's punish, what I was We'll thinking. punish him on the die. I mean, if you were not going to shoot with Fel, I can see an argument. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because Fell without tokens is a lot more vulnerable. If Vader gets hit for a couple points, what's the big deal, right? So four natural crits. <laughs> well then. Good thing there are shields. So uh, four shields. So, what's, what do we know on the desk, evidently? 
The four natural crits is uh, <laughs> always what you expect to see. The Dengar primary attack back. Yep. And Spending ouch. his focus token. He's going to focus up, and that is almost certainly going to crack that stealth device off. Unless he gets a fantastic shot back. The defense dot roll here. No, he, he uses focus token. So, one critical. Mm -hmm. And see what. And this is why I would have just taken the attack with Vader. Hmm? What? What? The oh. critical. Oh, uh, ship console fire. Okay. Uh, a yeah. console fire, worsening Fel's action economy. One of the yeah. mid-range crits against Fel. Yeah. Not as terrible as it could be, but pretty not, bad. Not as good as it could be either. Yeah. 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 A loose stabilizer is absolutely lovely. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I, I only do green maneuvers, I don't care. What? So, so well. I think that's just rich as an experience showing uh, the shot. Taking the shot with Vader would have been beneficial. There's a potential that there would have been a blinded pilot crit potentially onto Dengar. If nothing else, it might have stripped a token. Yeah. Or put, or even taken some of those shields and gotten one of those crits through the hull, assuming yeah. the dice fell the same way. Yeah. And, well, we can never know, because that's not the course we chose to find. To follow. So... So, um, Rich needs to remember now that Dengar has initiative and will be moving first. Yep. Aaron is a relatively experienced player, so he's not likely to forget that. And... Well, Dengar, surprisingly, has a number of options here. With the IG coming in as well, this yep. could get messy for Fel really quickly. Yeah. Depend... Like... Because of the dial on the jump master, it could do some very, very interesting things. There's one maneuver in particular that I would like to see Aaron do here, but I don't know if he's going to try it. That is a target lock token, not a stress token. So he does have a full dial open to him. Yep. But I would very much like to see if he does what I want him to do. And if he can hear me, if he second guesses himself about it. <laughs> I have to see you totally stop listening to you guys because it messes with your head. <laughs> uh, right now, Fel is actually very vulnerable as he's lost his stealth device, so quickly removing an ace is a distinct possibility here. Yeah. And if you do that, then Palpatine is not so much a threat on his own. But, depending on what Rich elects to do, after all, one of the tricks to fly in ball bases is knowing when discretion is the better part of valor, when to engage in, as the night lords call it, tactical cowardice. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's breaking off from the engagement to line up a better shot later on. Exactly. You, you, you don't. Not everyone wants to just stand and fight and fight and fight, and that's not always the best idea. Sometimes you do absolutely just want to back off and come back and you know, try again and stab them in the kidneys. Fell has no problems breaking off for three or four turns to come back in later on. Yep. It's not wrong. It's just not, you know, honorable. Uh, having but it's not against wrong. Rich, a one hard with Fell holding his dress or something stupid like that wouldn't surprise me. But I really hope that he manages to dodge a bump that Aaron's going to line up for him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he, Aaron's going to try a one foot forwards and then the barrel roll to a right. Mm -hmm. Well, the IG is setting up very nicely to cover the angles. And now... Did he do what I wanted him to do? Okay, he's just measuring to see if one of yeah. the things he thought of might work. Yeah. And yes, he did what I wanted him to do. I don't know if this will fit. Yeah, 
That's the main reason. That's the, that's the main risk. I personally didn't think this would fit. I thought that the one forwards and the attempted barrel roll backwards would have been more. Apparently he did not actually try to see if it would fit. Uh, unfortunately it does not. Which is what I was hoping would happen, but... Well, even then, it still stops Ralph from turning into the fight. And should he turn away, then he will almost certainly still be in Dengar's arc, and it's very difficult for him to... Yeah. Not be an arc. Unless he's hopped straight forward. But, well, we will see what he has done. In fact, we will now see what he has done. Oh. It's sort of too hard the yep. way I expect him to go. The standard film maneuver. Yeah. yeah. And now he's never really going to escape Dengar's arc. No. Not from there. But he's going to have to roll out to just not crash into that asteroid. So it does have to remember the critical. Yep. If the console fire triggers, it's going to hurt. Yeah. At least it's not a roll to flip face down. Those always annoy me because you do it and it doesn't even necessarily Remember work. Remember, you can, if you don't flip the crit first, you can't put your limits to flip the crit. Because it isn't an action on your action bar. Now this one actually prevents you. Uh, if it's the new damage deck? Is it the new damage deck? No, no, you cannot do, if you... It's a console fire crit, and that's yeah. the only crit, right? Yeah. But he can't push the limits to put out a console ah. fire, because it's not an action on his action bar. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So I would have been tempted to uh, just sit where I was. Or well, even if that crit just does something relevant. I don't mind this. And see here, missing that potential point or two of damage from Vader last turn yeah. could be very relevant. If that crit isn't something relevant, that could just be a dead fat. Oh, that's the angle looking at uh, Too hard back in, yeah, perhaps. But uh, I personally would have actually opted for a two bank in that position, most likely. But, well. So this is what Vader to do. can actually finish off Dengar. Yep. As if Dengar's dead, he doesn't get to shoot you back because he's yeah. dead. Or even if that crit just does something relevant. Oh, don't mind this. <laughs> and see here, missing that potential point or two of damage from Vader last turn yeah. could be very relevant. If that crit isn't something relevant, that could just be a dead fat. Well, oh, so if you leave, if you leave him on one hole now. You're going to be kicking yourself for not taking mm -hmm. that Two days plus a crit on three actually has a pretty reasonable chance of pushing something through, so... Unfortunately, here we are. Sometimes you have to take the damage where you can get it. And frankly, I would have rather have taken a couple of hits on Vader than a couple of hits on... than a single hit on Fel. Yeah. Vader's got shields and he doesn't have a stealth device. He's just as evade worthy, yeah. even if he's lost his shields. All right, here's Vader's shot. Looks like a good one. So, two hits and a focus token. Yeah. So he spends the focus, converts so it to a hit. Three hits and a crit. Yep. So that crit will definitely be hitting hull. Two of the... So this is what we were saying about... Had Rich taken a shot with Vader last turn, there's a chance... What crit was that? Uh, thrust control. Thrust control. Thrust control fire. Inflicting stress on both of those ships. Thank you, Mindlink. 
The mine link did uh, did give Dengar the focus token this turn, so yep. it's balancing itself out. I'm not knocking it in in so all of the play that I've seen. Dengar's return shot yep. gets two hits. Yep. Vader gets very little. Two focus symbols, so he's now wishing he palpatine that into a hit. Uh, who are you shooting at? It would be three ah, hits if you spend focus. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well, you forgot your focus, so. <laughs> Alright, so he's deciding how he's going to get Vader out of this. Well, you can take zero damage now by spending the evade and Palpatine. Yes, and but. And then relying on dice next round or take damage this time and potentially take three damage next round and die and see the the thing is i don't particularly like like vader does have the tankiness so i would personally just not spend pulp here and because oh he does not yes, have arc out of arc. that's very fortunate so for it's Val. going to be that makes it the decision a lot more difficult for for aaron here because Trying to finish off Fel when he's only got a focus token? But, yep. yep. There's a second shot on Vader. Unfortunately, that focus isn't going to help him. That's why you remember it at the time. Yeah. Three of Ed. So there you go. It's, the, it's a net loss of one shield on Vader if he'd have yep. spent the to token. But now the terrible roll, and it looks like he got the former because that's probably going to hit Vader. Where's that extra die coming from? Uh, Obstruction? Okay. So, okay. so both shields gone off Vader now. Yep. There's a very nice natural heavy laser cannon shot comes out of the IG. But see, Vader is not particularly discomfited by that. He's closer to dead, oh, but that's that it. Point of damage onto Vader. Yep. He may be discomfited, but he's not dead. Vader can Vader is and shot comes out of the IG. But see, Vader is not particularly discomfited by that. He's closer to dead, oh, but that's that it. Point of damage onto Vader. Yep. He may be discomfited, but he's not dead. Vader can Vader is surprisingly tanky for a tie. For a tie. I mean, he's still very squishy in the grand scheme of things, but yeah. And the shuttle is going to make a very retaliation. And Dengar will get out of that one just fine. So how much hole is left on Dengar now? Two whole remaining. Yep. Dengar's taking a beating. But if there's any one ship that can carry out the end game fairly well, IG is one of the best contenders. Just because of that potential resilience with auto thrusters and three green dice, and the sheer amount of hull and shields that those things have, on top of the fact that they're always kicking out four dice. Yeah. I think if Rich learns from his mistakes, you know, in the game where he had and actually keeps the shuttle in the fight and manages to line up some shots, he could still be in a very good position here. Yep. Fell. It's going to be tricky. But. He's well positioned to do so here. Now, the IG has an interesting maneuver choice because a one bank, <laughs> if it was not for that little mustache rock right there, a one be bank perfect. would be very lovely right here. But I don't know if a two bank would clear. The, the two bank will bump into. Uh, yeah, Dengar. I don't think it will. But well, if he doesn't bank in, he may not get a shot. Yeah. A really conservative play here is just taking the one straight. Because well, Vader is going in the right direction. Fell. Well, he's going away, so he, he, he's not something you need to worry about this turn. Uh, the, the thing, just bringing it back to real West discussions while it's uh, still picking manoeuvres, the thing I really like about Dengar specifically into Palpaces is that 
it effectively becomes a three ship west into you if you can fly Dengar well enough. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the weaknesses that a two ship west has against Palpatine Aces is actually pushing damage through because if you if you're very lucky you can force them to spend everything on one shot but they still take no damage. Yep. So then you need the second shot to h- try. Yep, it's, it's the multiple you, attacks. Yeah, it's when you get to the third and the fourth shot is that physically extremely devastating. Yep. And Aaron's West gives him the potential to do that. And that's always been the thing about Fel. Like, throwing multiple three dice attacks at him has always been reasonably powerful because he usually has to spend a token every couple shots. And eventually he runs out of tokens. Yeah. But against only one or two attacks at round, Fel is almost unkillable. Yeah. Also worth remembering, obviously, that Aaron's gone with the um, unhinged Astromach. Yep. So, he's got those threes in there, so th- yeah. that dial is wide open and he can still pick up some fairly good action economy out of it. Yeah. Even if he flies into something, he's fine, because he's still picked up a target lock. That's and a, it's not the worst case. I should actually credit Richard's points for getting half of Dengar as well. Yep. It's only polite. So, I think now that the dial's down, I won't wait until Rich has put his dial down, but I think I know where Aaron's going here. I'm not, oh no, maybe not, looking at it actually on the table, it's a little bit different. No, it should be okay, it should fit. Yeah, there's a multitude of options here. Of course, he's still limited by the fact that the IG is going to be the one that's going in there first. Yeah. Like if Dengar was going out first, then he would get a lot of power out of it. There's a stop out of the shuttle, hoping to keep the IG in its arc, and the one forward out of IG-88B. Yeah, the only, the only movie really had yeah. open to him. It's really the only reasonable one. This is where we see if Rich is K-turn invader again. It guarantees him a shot. The K turn from Vader in this position guarantees him a shot. Yeah. So, three bank left is what I was expecting Aaron to be doing in this position. And well, he's moving the ship, right ship out of the way to be doing it. Yep. yep. And hooray for action economy. No, it was the three yep. bank. He has unhinged astromech. So that makes it a green move. So it's K4 security draw, it still kicks in. Yep. Turning on some power. It's not a good position for the sloop because, as well, you can see, yeah. it's, it was far too close for the, to even risk, I feel. Yeah. I still feel that there is a very good chance of Dengar dying this round if Rich has K turned. Mm hmm. The only downside to this choice is that the Dengar zone is now all the way over there and no ship will end up in it. But, well, that's not so bad, given that he's in a reasonable position. So, Fel, this is the one I was... So, again, we're just checking. Just seeing. Yeah, looks like the two bank would have, would not have gotten him out of there, and yeah. Bell is opting for so, a three and remaining stressed. Well, it wasn't really a good option after a bow roll, other than maybe three forwards, and then a, a bank. Two, yeah. Well, the uh, bank boost and then evade action. I would have preferred that just because it opens up. It at least does give you the actions. And having played against Rich, this is what I was expecting to see was the K turn. Indeed. This could be the end of Dengar. But then... But it could also be the end of Vader. Depending at least on he's Vader. too close for that double tap oh, laser cannon shot. Yeah. 
So I didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> so I knew the four, the four K would have guaranteed him a shot, even with the yep. barrel rolls. Mm. A very so good result. Crit, and then adding the crit from ATC. Yep. And a dead Dango. And that is absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, just imagine what Palpatine Aces could do in the hands of a skilled operator. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have to be honest, I've been uh, giving Rich a lot of abuse since I started working here. Um, It's just, as a War Machine player, I feel that he needs to be abused. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to be four out of the primary, so that's going to hurt. No matter what, Vader is not getting out of this without taking a little damage. Ouch. That's going to be taking a lot of damage. He's going to have to pulp to not die. Oh, wait, no. Looks like that's... Oh, well, wait, no. Even if that's two of eight, he's dead anyways, right? He's only got two hull. Yes? Yeah, so, so there's no sense popping. No. He's just dead. Yeah. And see, this is actually my problem with Dengar. Like, he is not actually that difficult to kill. Yeah. <laughs> yes, your dice are not helping, but he's still fundamentally fairly easy to kill. You think half of Fel and, and all of Vader was worth it for Dengar, though? I am disinclined to say so yes. Yes. An obstructed range 3 shot against an IG. That just doesn't hit. Alright. And that puts Aaron on the board. That so 35 point Vader. At this point in a uh, tournament game, this is where I switch focus if I'm Aaron and start piling onto a shuttle. Yeah. Half points for a shuttle gives me the win. Either way, he's got to kill the IG. Yeah. Or at least, like, no matter what, he would have to attack the IG, yeah. so um, you're fine there. If you can get onto a shuttle without taking much yeah. fire back. I don't actually like the shuttle's position here because it looks like the one bank is going to put it on that rock. The one bank won't, uh, won't clear that rock. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, but the two two banks should be okay. Yeah. Can't do a three because he's stressed. Yep. But the three also is getting rather starting to get rather close to that mustache rock. And Aaron's got a really strong position here. For yeah, Fell's pointing the wrong way. He would have to hard turn and boost back into the fight. And if he does that, he will probably end up nose to nose with the IG, which is the last place he wants to be. Yeah, so he did yep. try the two. Yeah, looks like he's de looks like he was concerned about the same thing we were. So, yeah. fortunately, he's yeah. going to remain the stressed. Two is clear, yeah. Yeah. It was the one that we were. Yep. The one would absolutely have landed on that rock. He so barely cleared it with the two even. It's actually a good positioning for next turn. Yep. That's actually a really good move by Rich. That's Honestly, in the position, it's the only move. That's what I would have been doing. So, does Aaron boost? I would be inclined to say no. Because Fell's angled into the board, and if he's going to drop that stress, he does not have a lot of options. I think he's covering any potential spot where the IG might like to go. That's two! I would love to be able to hard left three with an IG. Yeah. I think lots of people would. Maybe it's an upgraded card I've not seen. It was a hard two, but the IG does not have a hard three. Yep, stops at the bank for three. It's actually a surprisingly slow fighter. It's surprisingly... Well, the thing uh, is, the way you look have, at it and it's described, yeah. Yeah. you'd expect it to be able to go super fast. But, well, 
they're not as fast as you'd expect. They don't have the five. But they can't, they're too fast to fly slow. Yeah. Because they're a large base ship, plain and simple. Could you imagine if those things had a five? Like, how much distance could they cover? Yeah. Yeah, no matter what Rich does here, he's going to be in a bad position. Either it's going to be this turn, or it's going to be next turn that he's not happy with where he is, because that IG is in a very nice position. Given the current position, I would take a couple cracks at Fell just to see if I can get him down. You, because uh, his stealth device is already gone. You have no... There's nothing wrong with shooting yeah. at Fell with your HLC. Yeah, at this point, like, while go turning on the shuttle is a good plan, like... Fell is just in such a good position to go after. Yeah. Especially because like his stealth device is gone and you are IG eighty eight B. You get two tries at it. Yeah. If you make him spend a token the first time, you are perfectly happy with that. Oh he's spending Glitterstim. Oh yeah. Robot drugs! So Fell's taking a hit, potentially. Oh wow, that is a very nice shot. One, two, uh, three, four. Would actually be willing to take the hit here. Yeah, because, because of the secondary, that is actually guaranteed damage because, or nearly yeah. guaranteed damage. Yeah. That. It's only three dice. But, yeah. If you roll too many yeah, dice, you have to re-roll the whole set. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. There you go. Good, good guy, yep. Aaron. Yeah, good guy, Aaron, telling him how to uh, not fluff the gun. how to play against Gunner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's always also that risk of the crit coming through next turn, and without token, there's a chance that he'll just die right there on the second shot. Yeah. Fortunately, he, unfortunately, he can't do that again. Definitely think that was the right choice. Yeah, I did not actually see what the result was when he rolled one too many dice, so... It was three of eights and one blank. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. But, well, always gotta make sure you roll the correct number of dice. Yeah, yeah no, you still... No, you didn't Palpatine yet. Yeah. 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 Alright. Two shields from yeah. the IG. See, the shuttle's doing work. So, Rich has learned from his mistakes in our game and is actually getting a lot of value out of his shuttle. Well, Glitterstim was useful. Now, this turn is going to be a little clunky because it's going to be hard for him to turn in on where Fel wants to go. You also have the same problem for a shuttle, unfortunately. Yeah. I believe there'll be enough space in between the Mustache Rock and the IG's base to just bump into him. Yeah. On but, one bank, but I can't be 100% sure from myself. Yeah, it's that's really difficult to tell. That is the move I would be going for anyway. Yeah. At the very least, you need to start turning to try and chase down like, that IG because you're not doing anything else. Yeah. And gives you a better angle for next round. Four forwards, screen, get some uh, distance, or do you turn in? For Fell? Yeah, if you turn in and bump, it's not the worst. Yep. But if you don't turn in and don't bump, and you end up nose to nose with IG, it could be very bad, because auto thrusters goes away. I would look to clear and try and bring the shuttle in back into the fight here. And the shuttle might, will bump first and potentially have arc on the IG. Yep. So you could, with the way that Rich and Aaron have been rolling, it could be a dead IG. Yep. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So this is where it's fine out viewer. if it fits. I think it will. I'm about 90% sure that it will fit. Yeah, it does not look like it does. No, it's in it'll not hit the rock, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. But... Well, because of the way it pushes back the corner angle, I thought it might, but oh, no, looks like it doesn't. No, I was, just clear. I, was, yep. I don't want to say certain, because from this angle, of it's never certain, but I was in the, in the high 90s that that would fit. It's a good move. Yep. Well, looks like Aaron doesn't trust the two to get him out there, so he's just no. going to go for the three. It's the right thing. I don't think the two would have cleared that rock at all. Yep. And now he's deci deciding what action he wants to take. There are a lot of interesting choices here. Honestly, a boost puts him somewhere interesting in Fell's way, so. Well, this is where I'm hoping where Rich actually turned in, to be honest. But. We don't have as many yeah. options. I do kind of like this one because it puts him in the way and it restricts Fell's positioning next turn here. Yeah, so it did turn in. Ah. Clears his stress. Actions up and forces the IG to turn around and head back into the shuttle's arc. Yeah, that's it. The, uh, the IG only has the 4k of the swoop right now. Yeah. Now because, because that rock yeah. is in the way. Yeah. Now because of no combat, I would probably just take up his movement action and nothing else here. Because he does not need to do it. No, it's just I would look to set up. Where he is, I don't actually like that position. I like. I would prefer to boost forward and have a little more movement around those rocks. Again, having played Rich, I feel like he's going to do a K turn. Mm. Also reasonable. If they both 4K, it's possible they won't even be in range. So, well, so the, the, problem, the, the problem Rich so. has here is obviously the, the herd 2 with that boost is going to really change that shuttle's angle, which is why I would have been happy with my positioning. If you could do the, um, Fair enough. The herd turn with a shuttle, you'd at least be pointing straight. But now... I don't know. It's going to be tricky. Yeah. Now the IG has to decide how it wants to come back into the fight. Does it just go, want to go for the long corridor and cruise back in? Or what? That's what I'd do, probably. I don't think... Well, again, I've got a HLC. The tag lock on Fell is already established. I don't have to change it if I get shots on the shuttle instead. Hmm. I don't think Rich is doing too bad for, you know, week three of his X-Wing career. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not like Aaron's winning all the store championships. He's at least one of the more reasonable players around here. Second in left bridge, I believe. Just make me look... Does make me wish I'd gone. So obviously, I would have cleaned up that field. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Sorry, he did manage to get more of a turn in than I thought the shuttle might. No, so it's not too bad. Yeah. It doesn't look like Aaron's electing to cave. Yeah. It looks like he's electing to just stay away from the shuttle and just get behind it. Yeah. I actually might have considered the same because if he's not taking fire, that's up to him. that's to his benefit. And so, so. this could actually end up paying off, as he actually now has a fairly clean turn back into the fight. Yeah, I think boost forwards past the uh, moustache rock, and then you can come back around. It gives the uh, IG uh, a difficult choice of letting the shuttle get behind him again and getting shots. 
the action choice is going to be very relevant here. I think if Rich can get a couple more turns of shot. Yeah. It's going to all be about what position he chooses to be in here. Remember, You, you declare a direction, not forwards or back. Yeah. And if you have any legal role in that direction, you must take one. Yeah. Good guy, Aaron. Yep. I did tell him that last week, so I would, I would have punished him this time. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the roll in here because it cuts off a lot of options, but... Ooh. Spicy. Going for a boost. Oh, it's a good boost. I like oh. it. The too hard will take you around that mustache rock perfectly. Yep. But is a very predictable move. Unfortunately, yeah, that also really open that really gives the IG a lot of room to hunt you in though. But it forces the uh, the options here. Yeah. Well it's always the thing about the IGs getting their shot set up. Buy more batteries. Shining in his eyes. Blind him with science. And as noted, we are down to dials. And, well, the shuttle's stressed, so it's really only got one move here. It's the one back. <laughs> yeah. He might do something else, but why? It's not like it's the uh, YV where you can three herd all day long. And laugh maniacally while doing it, yeah. I'd uh, like to welcome Audio Weasel to the stream. He was worried he wouldn't make it today. Sorry about your long day in work. I would expect the IG to actually bank here just because, well, that's where Fell's going to end up. There's not a lot of... Given that he's already committed to pointing this direction, he's going to have to go somewhere. Yep, it's a good choice by Rich here. He's learning. Get the target lock his turn. Yep. Knows he's unlikely to actually have the shot. But the, tar but the target lock will can potentially be relevant later. Yep, gives him a hard two next turn and still a modification to a dice. Yep. And this is where I was saying about the, uh, the potential to just trade with the IG. Yeah. Just grab the token, and that is the exact hard two you predicted. And... I'd be happy with my positioning here. In fact, I'd potentially boost I'd... to range one. I'd... Not at that health, I wouldn't. But I'd be happy if I can put four damage onto the IG. Which is unlikely, I'm... Well, yeah, then he has to chunk half of the shuttle out to get there, so... Yeah. Uh, and with five minutes to go... Do they know this is timed? Yes. Ooh, actually, with the roll boost, that might put him just outside the R. Yeah, the boost forward would be interesting. Mm, he's committing to the straight boost, which... Well, looks like he's just it'll just slip the arc. Oh, it's gonna be tight. Honestly, good um, enough. Now Fell does have the shot, but the larger base does not mean that the IG will necessarily have a shot back. Yeah. Hooray for the joy of different base sizes. Yep. Yeah. It's the joys of flying Fell, to be honest. Yeah. All of that repositioning and still getting a focus. Yeah. And is he going to Palpatine as well? Is Palpatine in the crit as well? 
Mm-hmm. Just enough to not really take much. Moment of truth. Looks like a no. Yeah, no more shots here. Seems strange just getting to a normal show where we just talk about X Wing, lots of people playing X Wing. <laughs> we need more controversy. More drama! More worms! <laughs> well, we have all the worms you like, but these aren't actually very good. <laughs> they're, very, they're, they're very bad for you, actually. But also, the candy isn't that good. <laughs> Would you like a drink, Calvin? I'll run downstairs. Uh, some water would actually be great. Thanks. <laughs> now the IG is in a kind of awkward position because there's a rock, there's fell, and there's pointing the complete wrong way. And only three minutes left. of the Imperial Aces to get out of sticky situations is one of their strongest points. All of those boosts and barrel rolls help you not actually play the game. Uh, one turn it looks very likely to slap that IG onto a rock, so I don't think it's likely he'll try it. Uh, with the shuttle grabbing a hard two in, that definitely restricts some of Phil's options. Looks like Aaron isn't even going to try for a sloop. He's just going to Koyagrin right over it, accept the potential damage, and skip his action anyways because, well, he's stressed. That's a point. But the IG has, what, two shields left? One? Two shields left. Oh, looks like Chris put one more point of damage than he needed to. Uh, because he just hit the rock, but that only put him down to two shields. Oh, I could have sworn it I had two. Yep. Maybe I wouldn't have been as bold as you. Yep. Oh dear. Yeah. Looks like a pretty reasonable hop out of Fell. He's just running away to preserve points. He knows what's up. Yep, a good tag team, huh? <laughs> just so you know, Rich, the phrase is don't be a dick. <laughs> it's like the opposite of War Machine. War Machine nickname is Little Dick. Yeah. Anyways, well, IG's just going to punch the shuttle because he's got nothing better to do. A reasonable shot. Risky. That's the wrong option. That's the wrong option. Uh, as you want to make sure you don't give up half points for a shuttle. That ties again. Well, this is the last shot of it since we are at time. Yeah. Finish the turn. You're on. 
which is they're in the middle of rolling, so that is the end of combat. And that is half points on the IG. Uh, told you. Shot will do well. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> Shuttles are relevant. And Dave is absolutely correct. IG absolutely got the unlucky greens, and that will knock it down. That will be a clean-ish 40-point win. So 75 to 35 win to Rich. That's what happens when you take power game away, though, so, isn't it? Um, you know. That's what happens when my my focuses are useless on day. The goggles, they do nothing. It would have been one shield on Vader, which means he would have died the exact same shot he died to. <laughs> you might feel better though. Okay. So, I'll just finish chewing this chocolate now before I throw it over to the desk. And show them the massive amount of sugar you're consuming. It's just brown water, Coke Zero. Okay. Brown ish. Mm, brown water ish. Brown fizzy liquid. It's all right. Water ish. Oh. So, I mean, been playing three weeks. Not a bad showing for a pop shuttle list, sir. No. I've, uh, I've seen it flown worse, to be honest. <laughs> yes, this is true. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's not a tournament game, so you didn't feel too bad about helping you, right? I can kick Calvin off the desk and let you come <laughs> and chat about it, Rich. So I'll throw Calvin out and uh, Rich yep. can come in and have a talk. And then, uh, no, it's okay. It won't, it's only going to be a quick one. Well, good game, Rich. Well won, well won. Yes, yeah, all, all skill there, no luck, no dice. Oh, well, let's see, Joyce for Palm Team Aces, you make your own luck by just changing the dice whenever you want. Yeah, it feels pretty strong. I gotta say, a lot of that was from uh, your advice. Um, okay. From get, Wait, the, get the shuttle in there and, and fight. You use so. the shuttle a lot better in that game, I think. Right, it pretty much did all of the damage to the IG uh, to get you half points. The IG, for sure. Uh, yep. I played, uh, Vader did lots of work before oh, he yeah. died. Uh, Rolling four natural crits, I felt. I just felt wanted dirty. to sh show my <laughs> opponent who's boss and what yeah. my uh, loaded dice are uh, capable of. So. so you're enjoying the jump into X-Wing? Um, week oh, number three for you? It's great. Uh, win three? Well, week uh, three. Week three. Week, week three. Uh, yeah. Yes, week three. It's been awesome so far. Yeah, Greg pretty much talked me into playing. I needed a little bit of a break. And... Um, yeah. No, it's good. So it's a little bit different to War Machine. Oh. I think it doesn't take as long to play each game and come set up. And I'll yeah, have three ships. Uh, and I and I feel I play pretty slow right now, yeah. relative to decision making. I mean, I don't think overly slow, but not. I've seen slow. So yeah, well, yeah, but I feel like you know once you know if I'm not trying to play around with what's in and what's out for, like trying to <laughs> superimpose my. Uh, you, uh, you're getting some abuse for not using your template organizer during the game. During the game? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to. So uh, <laughs> I'd like to start. Um, but I just got it, and I, also I'm a noob. So, it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was actually, um, you know, I, like I did pick up the U-boats yeah. first to just go. Okay, I'm just gonna play this, and then I tried it, and it was a little dull. Um, you know, although it's a lot more fun. When I adjusted and I got my ranges a little better, yeah. uh, blowing stuff up was like when you played six ships into me last yeah. week. That was really fun blowing up all of them. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, but this is like you know, and I can already see like I don't feel like I'm playing well in my arc dodging and stuff. But at least like I had one good play there where I arc dodged. I was yeah, like, yeah, felt, the end, uh, felt felt good. Yeah. I was, uh, was like, yeah, I can do it, and uh, I can see the potential of the list. Yeah. Uh, you know, I haven't played with the dice map enough to know what an advantage Palpatine is. Yeah. Uh, clearly, it's very good. Um, you know, uh, seems like defense early, offense late is kind of whittle away your yeah. opponent. I mean, only having two dice on Vader is kind of odd. And I, I mean, I guess it's three with that target lock because you yeah. just leave that on the full time. It's pretty awesome. So. Yeah. 
but it feels strong. It's super fun. Uh, you know, I'm only worried about my one ship. You know, I, I'm already seeing that. You know, I can do a red maneuver bump when I'm already, you know, whatever. Who cares? And then just kind of move the rest of my ships. And, yeah. You know. Um, yeah. So. Well, if you're up for another game, I'll kick you off, and you can pick which list you want to use for the next one. Uh, you need to run off and oh, you need 20 to 7, I suppose. So yeah. you'll need to go and uh, what time? Uh, 6.40. 6.40? So, yeah. so yeah, I think I'll need to go yeah. after this. But. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get Aaron on. I'll, I'll kick you off and get Aaron on now. Great. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Thanks a lot, Red. See ya. Congrats on the win. Yeah. Alright, so another Palpatine player. Usually. Usually. Commiserations on the uh, I've went to Dengar. the Pirate's Guide yeah. side, but... Yeah, I really like Dengar. He's so squishy. He's so squishy. Yeah, I found that I, when they came out, I didn't buy three U-Bolts. I only got two. I yeah. was running Dengar for a while. I think I, did I play Dengar against you? Yeah, you played Dengar yeah. and... Lats, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was Lats. Um, just, or, it just dies. It, Are you a stiff freeze? So and he just, yeah. yeah I've been toying with him for a while. I took a, a similar list to this to uh, Myth Regionals with Dengar having VI Tactician uh, and the Pain Bot, so R5P8, just to basically completely try go anti-aces with it. Because uh, if you can get the double tactician shot off with with Dengar, uh, that's double stress on an ace. Yeah. And if Fel shoots at you, potentially half a third of the health's gone. So. Yeah. And then being pilot skill 11, you're moving last, so you can probably barrel roll to get that range two shot. Yeah. And I liked it a lot, but so fragile. Yeah. Um, so I switched over to this just because with it, between Atani and uh, uh, K4 security droid, getting a a free focus or a free focus a free target lock and then being able to focus myself yeah. I find keeps them alive a lot longer but. yeah I actually really like your use of uh, a tiny mind link in that list it's pretty nice so you, you return your pop with as them as long as you're careful and pre yeah. it it's not that big of a deal and with unhinged on there I haven't had any issues with yeah. being able to clear the stress of Dengar uh, and then giving a focus to both of them, so even if I am pulling the Sanguars loop or K-turn with the IG, then he still has a lot of firepower. No, so even the turn you actually disengage with Dengar, obviously it died anyway, but that's pure dice, but having that disengage option open to you, yeah. and the ability to get the focus and stuff, that's what Unhinged adds to it. Right? Those extra greens, they, they help so much. It just adds so much more extra viability to it. Yeah. Have you got any thoughts on Palpatine Ace? Seeing as it's a pal basis show, I know you. Um, what do you normally run in your list? I've I've played around with the Inquisitor yesterday. I we had this conversation. I do not like the Inquisitor. I it it, it doesn't work for me. I don't like just having my ones. It's, it seems too slow to compare yeah. to Fell. But auto thrusters are nice. But I think I'll probably stick to Vader mostly. Yeah. Um, what I took to Lethbridge Regional Regionals was uh, swapped out engine upgrade for. Um, tie engines and then took Captain Yor yeah. and then had debris everywhere so basically your two aces who need their action economy don't care that much about half the rocks in the field yeah. if, you, if you can set up Yor properly which isn't too difficult to do but, so I'm personally going to stick with that for my pal bases but yeah. it's get it. It's more popular. Inquisitor is working with other people, so I'm interested to see what happens with it. Yeah, I'm messing around. I'm going to hammer the Inquisitor a little bit more and see what I can do. But yeah, I've seen a few different takes on it. I mean, there was Whisper Omega Leader and Palpatine. Yeah. I've seen, obviously, Palpatine, Wampa, um, Omega Leader, and something else. Yeah. So there's so many different things to try with Palp Aces. Just it, the list keeps growing, getting stronger. So, yeah. uh, are you wanting to run Palpatine, or do you want to do uh, the same list again? I'm. What do you want to do? Or who am I playing? It'll probably be me, me first, because I've got more stuff out ready. So what would I'm you like, like to play then? Uh, I'm, fine, I'm fine with either. Uh, I'll let you play Palpatine. All right. So I can try my uh, anti-Palpatine list. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and then Calvin will commentate for us and. Translation, make one of you both. Be gentle. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, you'll absolutely destroy me. Because this is a very gimmicky list. Alright, well if it works against if it works against Vader or Palpatine then I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Um, I'll give uh, Aaron time to get his stuff out and I'll quickly update the holding the lists. But yeah, I mean, do you want to go through some of your thoughts on Palpatine Aces? I like that there's actually multiple different varieties of it, so that you can tweak the core concept to your personal preference. Yeah. And... The variety will demonstrate kind of the player that you tend to be as well, I feel like. Because the Aces one, I, the version of Pulp Aces I've been having the most fun with is Darth Vader, Inquisitor, both with proton rockets, because I like trying to kill people. And sometimes, you know, like, getting that extra burst of damage on an early turn can just push a ship out of the game and put you in an insurmountable advantage, which yeah. is the core philosophy behind the brutal tactic list that people were so terrified of and really didn't need to be. Evidently, you know, I mean, um, I run it at work, well, I run a variation at Worlds, I run Kagi to give me an extra Pilot Skill 8 ship. Yep. Then I run um, Karnara with VI, and I also run Vader with Predator, and I just went that's what I was talking to Rich about when we were having our game. I, I feel like I fly with shuttle pretty well, and um, I feel like you have to go to get the value out of the list. <laughs> if you're not it's using, always a way. yeah. Um, I'm still not confident in my uh, flying of fell just yet, so. It is what it is, you know. I'm not going to complain too much. Yeah. I flew Fell for a long time, and I was just always frustrated with the fact that he just doesn't hit that hard most of the time. Especially when you're taking the ultra-defensive build of Auto Thruster Stealth Device. Sometimes he's just not going to hit, and he's not going to do anything, and you'll roll like a blank, and, or two blanks and a hit, and you'll just go, oh, um, I guess I'll leave it. Yeah, and that was the exact reason why I took Predator on Vader, because suddenly he becomes a monster. Yeah, my personal preference on the build is to have, if you're doing Fel and Vader, to have Predator on Vader. Yeah. It's a really difficult thing to squeeze in, but yeah, so it goes. Although, ultimately, ultimately, I definitely am preferring the Inquisitor variation instead of Fel, because then you can stick rockets on him and then kill somebody. Yeah. But, well, that's my relentlessly aggressive tendencies. So. The targeting computer alone is simply not aggressive enough on Fel, no. for my tastes. Because, like, oh, I get re-rolls, but I'm still not going. Here, eat five dice and fall over. Yeah. But then, well... So I'm Those of you have seen, who have uh, seen me play on the stream know just how much I love trying to kill things. <laughs> I'm guessing at what Aaron's list is going to be, so you might need to check with him. What his version him. of uh, yeah, Paul Paces so. is? Well, it looks like he's got Fell, but he's dug out an Interceptor, and although Jax is a thing, I don't know if that's I'm a sure way to go. I'm sure he would have uh, got the Royal Guard one. If it was I don't know. <laughs> some of them are... Some of the people around Calgary keep flying that... Oh, okay. 181st blood striped interceptor with Jax and then the red one with Fell and it drives me mad if you're gonna do it man I mean the color coded for you see for me it's like at least ha at least if you're not going to use the right paint scheme use your own see I don't have a problem with using my bright lime green interceptor as, as Jax because at least it's not a color scheme that they provided <laughs> in the box yeah yeah, so I've left you some space to uh, fill in some of the list. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to have prep my yeah. side. As David noted, yeah, four dice focus target lock is good, but you know what's better? Five dice focus target lock. I don't know if I can get five <laughs> dice focus target lock, but, you know, it should be good. Well, that's what, the, well, that's what a good rocket shot is.
honestly, I don't. I don't think the proton rockets is a good variation. I'm pretty sure that like spending those six points on something else is probably a better variation. But well, we can only damage. Go. All right, we are back on the desk so that you don't have to look at just me on the table. So, what have you got on your setup? Uh, my shuttle is captain, I'm just mm -hmm. So, stealth, auto thrusters. And your Vader is. Sorry, what was that last one? Really? Mark 2 and Ion Engine. Alright, so, Aaron's version of the same Fell Vader shuttle base is upgrading to your... Vader, in order to pay for that, Vader is going down to having a TIE Mark II title instead of, uh, a modification instead of an engine. And that is where we are. And as you have all realized, Chris is flying something crazy with... Crazy? Crazy? Yes. We're all calling you mad. I'm bad. I'm not crazy. I said mad. <laughs> Come on, you're British. You of all people should know when you mad is used to be insane. North Americans rarely use it. Sorry? Four feedback Black Sun arrays, and two with missiles, and stim, and 
chips. Drugs and drugs and chips. A natural pairing. As you can see, Chris is just making sure he has enough stress tokens for his gang of idiots. They work for Black Sun, they're all idiots. Of course, because Chris couldn't be bothered to do this, I've had to put little tags so that you guys can tell which ship is which here. We've got a lot of debris here, and hopefully we'll have a lot more soon. Both players opting for pure debris, which is an interesting choice coming out of the aces, given how little they tend to like stress. Ah, yes. But even then... Unfortunately, Yor only has Palpatine. I don't think he had room for a battle. Yeah, you can 
So here we are with a very dense field of debris. It's not surprising to see Chris choose this because with the change to feedback erase, he no longer can feedback while on a rock, so he's got to pick debris. And we're going to have to pull that scoreboard off. Whoa. Sorry? I'm just making sure which one is which. Because it's because they're both white, it's hard to tell which is which from a distance. Yeah. Alright. So the back corner two in two headhunters here are armed with missiles. The other four arrays of Zap. Evil Force Lightning. <laughs> so with a castle, with a more typical castle coming out of Aaron here, we see that he's a little more, we see that he's a little more familiar with some of the Thing, the setup tricks that are available to the Paul Paces than Rich was, as Rich elected not to use any such thing. Oh, uh, where's the timer? Uh, if you, uh, you click down here, it's in, in the equipment, and then it's this one here. Yes. And then uh, it starts. It well, I pulled the timer because I couldn't find it, so. Yeah. And then, Okay, everything's grabbing a turn here. With a deliberate self bump and a roll, Aaron is looking to play this one a lot more slowly than and Rich was last turn. Last game, rather.
unlocking the extra greens is interesting, but in this case, it's also to unlock your. This is ver this variation is a lot stronger against the tacticians and the stress hogs of yester week, I guess. Yester month. Sorry. Yes, yester beta. But we no longer care because thanks to. The horrible wolf pack, the TLT, is almost gone from the meta. Or at least the pure quad TLTs and the stress hogs are. The intended setup here is for Yor to be able to eat stress, so... Also, this allows the aces to fly over debris, risk fairly minimal damage, and not even care as long as they're close to the shuttle. Because Yor instead will be stressed. Aaron is showing off just how defensively he's intending to play this one. Rolling back in and staying very conservative while pushing Vader out to try and pick up a flank. Continuing to cruise down the side of the board to look for a better setup position with Vader aggressively pushing down the side. Aaron is going to have to be very, very careful about how he approaches this. Because. That massive swarm is potentially very dangerous to his ships. Because of the setup of having both missiles and uh, feedback arrays, it forces a lot of difficult choices on the opponent, and that is the intent behind Chris's list here. Wanted to know what Mata was? That is Mata. And, well, the Mata is a very different thing. Well, finally we see Chris beginning to turn, slowly crawling around the debris. Now what Aaron is looking to do is bring the shuttle, I think Aaron, what, what I think Aaron is looking to do is bring that shuttle in through those debris to provide supporting fire, and hopefully Vader can get back into this fight pretty quickly because all the way out there he's gonna need to. This is where that marked 
this is where the Mark II engine is actually useful because he'll be able to grab that three bank and come in fairly fast while still shedding stress. Electing for the three, he's likely to be a little more conservative than that by grabbing the two here. Aaron being very conservative and cagey about this positioning, you know, with with good reason. Alright, looks like he's going to take the approach of trying to pick off the missile carriers before they have a chance to pick up those target locks. All right. So we're just taking a little bit of damage here. A single point of damage. And return of fires too. Bell rolls millions of dice, doesn't get hit, surprising absolutely nobody. And again, pew, pew, pew for absolutely no effect, because Fell at range 3 against 2 dice just does not get hit a whole lot. Surprisingly, like nobody, no damage. Now, Vader's going to have to go for quite the long maneuver to try and get in there. Because, as great as Fel is, fighting an entire list of headhunters built to try and kill him, not such a great idea. Let's see if Aaron goes for it anyways, and see if it pays off. I'm gonna go with no. Yes, eventually the green dice will betray you just like your pathetic magic. Now, if I were Chris here, I would be going in very aggressively with the feedback array swarm and holding back the missile launchers. But, well, but, well, that's me. We'll see what Chris does. He has a lot of options here because he's now clear of those debris fields. He actually has a fair number of conservative maneuvers, and he could potentially cover every single one of Fell's reasonable options to reposition himself here. Because a right... Although, depending on how he brings in Yor, Fel could go for a very ballsy turn into the debris field and run. It's an interesting option that Captain Yor opens up. Yep, we are indeed grabbing hard threes. Mm -hmm. 
So what this does is block off pretty much any forward option from Fel. And the bank also blocks off some more lateral motions. This also pushes him back and creates a wall, making it very difficult for him to get, get to the missile launchers. It's slow moving and it's surprisingly dangerous up close. It's just like a king in chess. <laughs> yes, instant concede by knocking over your king, or in this case, your emperor. It's slow moving and it's surprisingly dangerous up close. It's just like a king in chess. Well, looks like he's going to try and get out, but doesn't look like that roll's going to stick. Thanks to that debris that is just ever so slightly cl too close. Hooray! Hooray! I don't believe Fell approached from the correct angle on this one. He was a little too aggressive, which he probably should have turned back in. Yeah. I believe he should have turned back in rather, and to go towards Vader rather than float this direction because the headhunters were already pointed at him. And Fell is now forced to run, to flee. That is the question. Is he in range one or that one feedback array? Where can he go? Where can he go that isn't a terrible, terrible position? And that sad thing is, that may actually not be a great position for him either. So we'll find out in shooting after Vader goes. So Aaron is being surprisingly conservative with Vader. I'm personally not a fan just because, well, he's so far away and he's doing so little with Vader and he can't even boost in to shoot. Unfortunately, that's all. He fails to target lock that one headhunter. And now, a barrel roll should get him that extra little bit that he needs, unfortunately. It's also going to obstruct his shot. And a headhunter rolling four green dice is against all of nature's laws. Here's a shot. And a crit. Get out scot-free. And the headhunter just gets straight out. No damage, correct? That's correct. That's not a good... That is an inauspicious start for the Paul Pace's list. All right. Missiles, missiles, missiles. Do we have missiles? Looks like we have missiles. So I've got the stem, so I'm not going to use one of the cells. Oh, no. Nope. No glitter stem pop occurred, so no missiles. Sad times. Primary at Vel will 
And now the swarms upon swarms of red dice. An obstructive shot at the shuttle generates any damage. One point. Well, looks like Chris has opted to just try and get rid of that pesky shuttle at Palpatine. Well, that one looks like a shot at Fell that does nothing. These shots at the shuttle aren't actually that all, all that bad. Slowly plinking shots off. Death by a thousand cuts. Should have been a shield. So remember to pop Glitterstein. If Chris was a better player, he would have remembered to pop Glitterstein this turn. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm giving Chris all the Greek this game. Alright, so overall, a very unproductive turn for the Imperials, and, well, several shields off the shuttle, so not too bad. And now Fel's pointed the wrong way and going to have a lot of trouble trying to get back into the fight, and Vader, kind of awkward. So far, this conservative play isn't paying off for Aaron very much. <laughs> now, to me, the obvious play for yours is just one straight bonk into the fell and uh, murder an interceptor that happens, murder a headhunter that happens to drift across his arc. But, well, we'll see if Eric does that. Because after all, feedback arrays everywhere! Fell, on the other hand, with a debris cloud out front, is probably just going to turn one way or the other and flee. I would look to turn to Fells right here, simply because that doesn't block off Vader's line of approach. Vader is probably just going to bank one and hope to line up a shot on something. It's not a very good position for Aaron here with the Swarm in an excellent, excellent position to run up and be very annoying. But of course, that's the whole point of this list, to try and screw with the Paul Bases list. Also you boats yes. By getting in the way and being annoying. Yes. Being annoying is awesome. Now, Chris has a number of options. He could either shove the headhunters in super aggressively and try and pin down the ships again, 
or go very conservatively and force the tie to slowly turn around while taking massive amounts of fire on the shuttle. In this particular situation, actually killing the shuttle might not be an absolute, a completely terrible idea. Given that it's only got 7 health left and it's about to eat 12 dice worth of dental work. Well, looks like Chris is just electing to push forward and get in the way. Clips the debris for no effect. Oh, he's looking to block off Vader as well here with this set of plays. And simply stick feedback arrays in it as uh, many annoying places as is possible. A worthy goal. Now this creates quite a nasty field for the shuttle and also blocks it. Unfortunately, click Chris clips a few debris clouds and is not going to be getting the best. Ooh. Oh, isn't that interesting? He's chosen to switch his target lock to the shuttle. It does look like he is indeed going to try and murder the shuttle. Just get that out of the way, get that bonus dice modifier out of the way, and... Well, with that shittle shuttle sitting right there, the odds are pretty good it's going to melt real fast. Fell flees over the debris. And passes the stress off to Yor. Good old Captain Yor, helping out his buddies. And Fel will just continue to play. With a boost, but no further. Vader cruises in. And has a lot of headhunters right there pointing at him. Not a happy place. Not a happy place at all. Yeah. All right, well, Chris is biting some glitter stem. That's what they call them, glit biters. Wow. Uh, I do not know what to say. So seven red dice from Aaron produces goose egg. So glitter stim and chips and the shuttle hurts. The shuttle hurts a lot. Minor hull breach? Yeah. All right. It's the old dummy. Yeah. So. <laughs> I got something. <laughs> hey, look, an evade result. Aaron actually got a result. Unfortunately, it's no good because 
Captain Yor dies to the Glitfighters. <laughs> Vader has four hull because of an error. I assume that Chris had entered that data correctly, but he had not. So how much did you zap Vader for? Three. That three. The one that was damaged was the shield, the one that, and then two of the other ones. So. Uh, the one that was damaged had a... Okay, so those front three all zapped Vader, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was Saturday. Uh, which one has um, one less shield? That one? <laughs> so Vader is at two hull, correct? All right, well, looks like this is working out really well because that's still a lot of feedbacks to go after Fel with. And damage to the swarm is minimal. Vader does not have a good position here. That feedback swarm is in a fantastic position to just get in the way of almost anything he might want to do. Block him off completely and just create a massive swarm of, haha, we're in your way. Obstructionism! We'll obstruct you harder than Republicans obstruct Obama. I don't know, I gotta draw as many different kinds of analogies from as many different sources as possible. Feedback arrays are indeed range one only. So creating just a cluster zone of feedback arrays is really good enough. As a Canadian, American politics is entertaining, we shall say, and leave it at that. It looks like Fell's grabbing it. Well, with the Koya Grin, Fell may actually have a chance of getting back into the fight. Vader has gone for, frankly, kind of what I would expect. Just a three bank to get the heck out of there, because Aaron has been showing that he'd rather play this one very conservative. I was gonna do the hard two, but I for some reason Unfortunately, Vader does not have an engine, which would have been a very easy boost away to go, haha, I'm not in range. Sorry? Yep. Hooray for an engine. So 
However, unfortunately for Vader, he's still getting a whole bunch of red dice chucked at him. Like that's just barely range three. That extra green die is going to help, probably. All the green. Uh, he's already forced to spend that token to avoid a single point of damage. Looks like the shooting at least did not do anything this round. Is that correct? No damage? Yeah. Alright. Yep, it's very difficult to bypass this line of massive feedback arrays, and the missiles are already gone, so they're not such a big deal anymore, but... Here we are with Chris showing off fairly strong positional play. Um, the aces are simply presented with no good option to deal with this. Turning into the swarm always risks that one of the swarm members jumped out in front to provide a block. And Vader is just completely pointed the wrong way with no engine upgrade to turn back around. joy of watching someone slowly attempt to break apart a swarm of six headhunters. Oh, that's an interesting position. Hopping onto a debris file just to get Invader's way. Oh, wow, he just barely missed it. Well, he's going to hit it next turn. And that one definitely hits it. He's down to zero shields, correct? No, it doesn't. He's up. 
Just two natural target lock focus. Just two. Well, Vader keeps evading, so. Bell rolls all the dice. Barely get, avoids getting hit anyway. <laughs> For all that effort, nothing happens as the ties continue to run away. They bravely ran away. Uh, the way your red dice have been going, they are much more likely to kill something than you are so far. Seven whiffs in a row? Like seven dice just completely keep go giving you nothing? I was expecting to be a Zed guy. Yeah, the fact that you still have all of your headhunters is a little worrying. At least the swarm is now splitting up, so Fell and Vader are each only going to take two or three attacks a turn. Oh, if I just keep chasing so we can't turn around, <laughs> I'd win on time. That is also very likely. Because, you know, feedback. Because of all those feedback arrays, there's not much you can do. Turning back in on a tie is basically a death sentence. Turning back in for a tie is basically a death sentence. Especially because all those disposable headhunters are in the way. Watch in amazement as two of the Empire's finest flee from a bunch of thugs. Because these thugs are loaded for aces. He's not Tycho though. He thinks he is, but he's not. <laughs> well, perhaps he's Alderanian and he's holding out quite a grudge for the Empire as well. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Lots of damage going round and round and round. Well, today we are learning that Chris can indeed hard counter a list. And this is the turn where Vader really feels that lack of engine. Well, that's only one token. So, ooh, looks like Chris is going to go for the shot. Ooh, it, it could pay off. Oh, it's a face up damage on Vader. I could have killed him this turn, so there's no point in being back in him. Ooh. That is a secondary weapon failure for Vader. Not that he's shooting. Not that he's shooting. Two hits. Two, I say. Aha, Fell has to roll. Doesn't get hit, just Fell. <laughs> yeah, guys, we're kind of sorry that this isn't as interesting as it could be, but hopefully you're enjoying the sight of the two, two of the Empire's finest fleeing a bunch of low-life thugs. <laughs> A sad day for the Empire. A sad, sad day. So this massive swarm of headhunters is doing a pretty good job of forcing Fell to the corner of the board. It's not helping that Aaron has been playing it very conservatively and has not even been making shots, so he's not even doing any damage. <laughs> and then, then, of course, the few times he did have a shot, his dice decided to just kick him in the junk. Chris is actually doing a very good job of positioning his ships to make it maximum annoyance value for dealing with these headhunters. Mm -hmm. 
Apparently the dice camera angle is messing with people because it's it's no because um, the dice that you're rolling are not next to you, like they're on the they're reversed. That's what they um, put the dice in one of them, right? Put di put a die in one of them. I mean that should be. Yeah, that's because it's the other way. Yeah. yeah. But you've only got two feedback arrays there. You don't get to kill Fell with a single turn shot. You don't get to kill Fell with a single zap. No, that's, I had to send enough to make sure I could keep Vader power. Yeah. Uh, I learned from the game against Greg when I was running the seven feedback. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fell does indeed have a shot for the first time, or the second time this game. He gets to roll attack dice. What's he going to do? Okay, apparently I've got all of the stats wrong here. So zero shields. One. I <laughs> need a hit. You get a hit. I need a damage card. Damn it. A damage card has been dealt to the headhunter Swarher because Val rolled the one hit. Guy who has zero shields left. Yep, and now he's one health. So the long range shots are great. Right, so the headhunters are just going to see if they get lucky and pick off uh, Vader from a distance. If we actually put the camera the opposite direction, it would probably fix it as well. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Sorry, I keep forgetting to update the headhunter tagging guys. Yeah, I tend to agree with this, the perspective that Aaron chose the wrong time to try and push Vader out to the flank. And ended up paying for it and bringing it back when he brought him in far too conservatively. Or, and here we are. With Vader and Fell running away unsupported. Well, hope, well... There's a chance that they could potentially lead the swarm back towards each other and slowly shoot at them, but, well. The only chance now. Fell is now very boxed in, because those headhunters can easily turn into him and pinch off his options of escape.
<laughs> Aaron's just saying he wants to get it over with. Well, eight and a half minutes to time, so. Again, Chris is just looking to block off space and deny the opportunity for the head for the ship for the Imperial Aces to ever turn around. Fell's jumping in super aggressively. Let's see, what can he do? It's a very interesting placement for Fell. He's got a lot of options here, none of them good. Well, none of them really good. Some of them are, are okay, but none of them are particularly wonderful because you're still looking at taking some damage. Because there's no way you're getting out of range one of that headhunter, which is going to zap you. Yeah, this barrel roll is actually going to at least... This barrel roll does at least push one of the feedbacks out of effect, and Vader is going to be fairly safe here, but again, Vader is just not in position to participate in any sort of combat here with one hull. Um, only a few minutes. Just over five minutes. I just turned off the timer because it was right over where Fell and that headhunter are dancing about. Five and a half. Uh, and this game is nasty because... Yikes! Is that the natural too? Aww, okay. A headhunter falls! Finally! Two dice on four, and Vader goes down. Vader's dodged a lot of two dice shots. Yeah, well. So it goes. There's not really any way for Aaron to win this game at this point, with only four minutes of time remaining. And five headhunters still on the board. One of them's dead.
Did you zap Val or no? You have to kill all the things to win. If you took a so I got a 20 point one, which is good. It's 20 points, you know? Yeah, you killed the slightly more valuable one, so technically it's a better choice than the one that can feed that. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're still going to come out on the bad end of this just because, you know, all the headhunters are alive and you need to kill three more, and you have two and a half minutes to do it. So I'm going to go with no. No, you can't. I think you're done. I think we're done here. And we are done here, folks. I don't know. I enjoyed it. For Some people seem to have enjoyed this one because you know, like watching Paul faces run into screaming in terror. Oh no! Feedback arrays. <laughs> See this? What do? Hello again, everybody. Um, again, I don't think. I don't know how long Aaron wants to stay, and we don't have any more people here tonight. Uh, um, yeah. No, unfortunately, we're not going to do another game tonight. We'll probably chat about that a little bit longer, and then wrap it up in probably 8:30. So, if you're only here for the actual live X-wing, feel free to jump out now as the numbers completely drop off. We're just going to bullshit about random things for half an hour, I suppose. Oh, well... Well, what did you think of uh, your counter? <laughs> Again, I think... Seemed to work! When we spoke about feedback arrays, and the last time I ran a similar list, I think I took seven Benaris with feedback. Um, as I said, I'd spoken about it with Aaron Bonner, and it was what he was saying he'd probably run if he wanted to take a powerful list in the current matter. This was prior to um, Jump Masters. Yep. So I was trying to think of a way of just giving it a little bit of nudge so it's not quite as bad against the Jump Masters. And I feel like going to a Black Sun Soldiers, taking two lots of ordnance, which I can fire simultaneously. Yep. Um, you've I still feel it's a skill matchup, but I don't think it's as behind the eight ball as if I'd have been running Benares. Yeah, there you you just lose a bunch of guys to torpedoes, yeah. and then they just they get to remove guys with their turrets first. Yeah, they actually don't actually they would not actually mind being in a tight cluster with you because they'd get to be throwing their three dice turrets at you. Yeah. The way I was looking at it was uh, realistically, I'd expect to maybe lose two Zeds in the opening engagement. Yeah. But with this list, there's a chance I can take a Jump Master off. Yep. Then... If you manage to double tag it with homing missiles and maybe push through another point or two, you can actually scratch a Jump Master. Yeah. Of course, so, they're, they're definitely going to scratch a Headhunter or two with torpedoes, yeah, but... <laughs> I'd be... But if they only kill a Headhunter with torpedoes, I think you're pretty okay with that result. And that's result. it. I mean, they've got to get lucky to kill six Headhunters with six torpedoes. Although, depending on how your green dice roll, it's entirely oh, possible. It's possible. I mean, you I'm can not... even dodge one and then flip a direct, and there goes yeah. a Headhunter. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's impossible. Yeah. But or... it, is, it is actually quite improbable. A lot of the time, they will have to mop up with a turret attack. Yeah. So... I feel like if I'm in my cluster group with this amount of debris that I take, I should be able to line up all six of my guys to shoot one. Yeah, it's actually also you don't care about the obstacles anywhere near as much as they do. No. And then the turn, I, if I bump into a ship, I can still like put damage onto it. If he yep. bumps into me, that headhunter's safe. Yep. 
So it's so, all about blocking with the damaged ones. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. I like I think it's very much a skill matchup. Um, <laughs> for the Palpatine Aces, however, I do think that it. It's the entire premise of this is oh, it's homing missiles. Do you want to take an evade with Vader? Do you yeah. want to take an evade with that? Oh, I've killed the shuttle. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about the aces because as soon as that shuttle's down, if well, I can get the you right can, block, it, yeah. like, you, I well, we saw you methodically run them down. Yeah, they're not. They so. don't want to turn back into you. Yeah, it's it's just not a high percentage chance for them because no. they've only got eight health and you've got sixteen health of feedbacks. Uh, and you saw that I thought about sending three feedbacks after Vader and just killing him, but I yeah. wanted to make sure Fell had to keep running. So I thought if I just split evenly, yeah. that's the right play there. Because um, if Fell turns back into you. Yeah. He doesn't want to take two feedbacks because then he's a bad positioning away from being dead. Yeah. With his stealth device intact. Yeah. Always devoutly to be wanted, just for the comedy value. Yeah. I do uh, think that I probably would have gotten greedy had I declared Glitterstim. I might have fired everything at fell, but I didn't want to. The entire plan was to try and play it conservatively. Yeah, to just try and get in. And I mean, I pr with those dice rolls, it was irrelevant. So I never actually spent the target box with the missile. Yeah, your so, the dice were pretty much were very well, much in your favor. I, I did, mean, Aaron very rarely rolled any red dice. But um, as in, I mean, the um, the attacks from the two missiles with glitter stim popped. Yeah, I had the target box as backup, but you didn't need it with guidance chips glitter stim. I was okay. Yep, no more than a single blink per right. Yeah. So there you go. So even uh, if I'd have taken concussions, I would have had yep same the result. Same result, yeah. And because of the well, stim with with concussions, I could have not taken stim. Yeah, that's true. I could be uh, an extra missile up. Ah, oh, yeah. cunning plan. Because, but that's the, t the case where I just roll four focuses. Yeah, and then you're like, God bit. damn it. But I actually enjoyed flying. I've not flown a swarm for a while. Uh, I did a mini swarm yesterday, um, last week, with the yep. four time, the Hell Runner and three cracks. Yep. Well, this one seemed to do. This one seemed to execute pretty reasonably. Uh, hate to disappoint Audio Weasel, but we've made Aaron suffer enough tonight. Yeah. So uh, there will be no more game. We would. Uh, We'll be endeavouring to get some more videos edited, so we have the backup ones, but I still haven't seen, uh, solved the audio problem yet. So, so yeah, I've got my stupid Mac back in with me to try editing videos on that. I'm not sure if it's a problem with the new microphone, because obviously we're using the old mic, which used to cut out all the time. But have we actually used this mic and had success commentating a video? I can't remember. I don't believe so, because we've been using this one recently. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's, there's lots of different ways of doing it, I think. It's only two games I've had tonight. No, three. It's, is it three games or two? Sorry? We've only done two games over tonight. Yeah, it was only two tonight. No, oh, we are one shot, what we'd normally aim for. But we'll be kicking off the week again. I'm recording some more games on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, well, Greg's recording the games for me, so I don't have to stay late. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. No, sorry, the uh, the audio problems are when we play the pre-recorded games. Yeah. It was uh, playing up a little bit. Um, do we have any questions from the chat other than if we'll play one more game? I mean, it's still gonna, we're on for a two, three hour stream anyway, so <laughs> it's a long time to be talking. Yeah, I. Oh yeah. So let's have yeah. a look if I can. The dice cam. Honestly, just reverse the um, yeah. camera so that the tripod is back towards the table, and it should be fine. Well, all I do is. Or the I dice suppose cam? you could flip it. Yeah. Just because I 
Oh, if we want to open up that can of worms again. <laughs> Are we on desk camera right now, or? Uh, we're just on the table. I see. Right, right to try and mess with the thing. Oh, that's not what I mean. I'll fix right. it. But yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, tonight we had no ghosts. Tonight was our pulp aces against things that are not pulp aces. A Dengar thing. Uh, we were talking about the intentional draws earlier at the start of the show. So yeah, we can go over it again. We are going to reopen up the worms. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the kind of worms <laughs> that is the intentional draw debate. <laughs> <laughs> um, how I think I, they will get rid of them, hopefully, is just have it decided by initiative, as like we yeah. were discussing, because they've already got a mechanism in place. Yeah, Adding a different mechanism will end up changing how the finals are resolved as well. Yeah, that's it. H having, given the fact that in the elimination rounds, there is a way of deciding the game, because you can't have a draw, that's the simplest solution. I don't like... The lack of a draw, mainly because of my European heritage. Uh, it's ingrained that if you play just as well as your opponent and earn a draw, you should be rewarded for that. <laughs> Which, the current state of no draws and no modified loss, only a modified win, just punishes you. Well, the modified win punishes the person who won by not giving them five points. Mm -hmm. And doesn't reward the person who got the draw, who yep. got the modified loss. It ends up producing so, less tournament points, which I'm yeah. still not a fan of. But well, so it goes. I prefer systems that always generate the standard amount of points. Yep. Um, of course, uh, being American or North American and having a preference for nice, clean tournament structures. I don't actually mind the complete absence of a draw, but yeah, that's just more because I'm just willing. I like a nice, neat, mathematically defined tournament structure. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong, I, I get it. Um, it doesn't really bother me. Um, just having, is anyone else having the problem with only having audio out of one speaker? Because I can try down mixing to mono. But. I'll just leave it for now. Um, I, said, I, didn't, I don't like the idea of intentional draws, but it didn't bother me. I understand why they had it. it. When you look at the fact that they write rules for FFG organized play, not for FFG X-Wing organized play, when yeah. you take the intentional draw rule in that, um, I don't know, I can't think of words, too busy thinking about X-Wing. When you look at it from that angle, you understand it when you can have the, the way out for Netrunner where you've got to play a runner and a court, or the way out for Star Wars LCG where you've got to play a light and a dark side deck. Right. A draw is actually a common enough thing. Hmm. Um, Less Swiss rounds. The problem is if you reduce the amount of Swiss rounds and have more undefeated players, then that actually creates more situations where intentional draws will make a cut. Because if you have, like, say, eight 3 0 players and you're cutting to top eight, then yeah. they just all intentionally draw and produce it. The whole point about more Swiss rounds is it will actually create a tier system. It will actually tier out the very top of the tournament yeah. into several tiers. Like, the top tier was going to make the cut regardless of whether or not they won, but the people who are on the bubble with a loss or two, those people can no longer. It's just the structure of the Swiss round style of tournament. Okay, let's see if that's fixed any of the audio problems. No one's ever mentioned that before, but I don't think most people have ever run into it I mean, before. It's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. I do feel the um, Renault. I can't remember. I can't remember what the event was called. Now is it Renault? Roanoke. Yeah. Roanoke Regional had too many rounds. Yep. So. But I've, I'm all for the um, Renault. I can't, remember, I can't remember what the event was called now. Was it Renault? Roanoke, yeah. Roanoke Regional had too many rounds. Yep. So but. I've, I'm all for 
making less Swiss rains in a bigger cup. The uh, event running time shouldn't be any longer. I mean... Yeah, less Swiss round and then doing something like a graduated cut yeah. actually appeals to me as well. Oh, to be honest, I could get on board with a double elimination format. It's basically what you have now anyway. In a sense, yeah. You lose two games, you're right. So I could get on board with double elimination. But what about the people that we got at our store championship here? I mean, some of them were 0-4 and they were still happily playing their fifth yeah, game. Yeah, that is the point. Uh, if people are coming t to play X-Wing and it... It's a problem with, again, I'm going to be horribly offensive to a lot of people, I imagine, which no change there, but I do not understand why people drop. It's, some, it's a bizarre concept for me to grasp. I don't, I've never played an event specifically to try and win prizing. When I'm at an event, I want to, I've, obviously I want to win, I want to do the best I can. But I've n never really felt like, oh, I've lost my two games now, I can't make the cut, what's the point? Yeah, well... So, from that side of it, I don't really get it. But if... And again, the events I run, or we run here, I'm not going to take all of the credit, but we tend not to have that many drops in Calgary. Yeah, it's... I'd, it's just one of those things. I don't really understand why. Well, that's why we had no drops. I mean, at the store championship at Myth, we didn't have any drops either, I believe. No. I mean... Uh, um, Kyle conceded to you in the top eight, which... But he'd already uh, played me in the Swiss, yeah, and he wanted to go to his dad's birthday. But, I mean, if you think about that, it's a 34-player event and a 29-player event. But we're both... Well, we were five rounds cut to top four or top eight. Yeah. And then they were five... Both were five rounds yeah. with a top eight cut. Yeah, so one drop from two events of that size isn't isn't bad. Yeah, that's not, it. Wasn't even really a drop. It was yeah. just sort of realizing that he. I don't feel like he was. He felt he was prepared for the matchup. Yeah. Like he just didn't want to play it out because he didn't think he could beat it. Yeah. And, and right, it was. His he dad's also had a it was his dad's perfectly birthday. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, At that point, it's like he got his range ruler. <laughs> Might as well go see his dad early yeah. if he doesn't feel like playing it out. But. I, I don't. I know uh, in big in the big events uh, at a con, I get it. There's stuff to do and see. Yeah. When they're running side events at Worlds or uh, at Worlds, I get it. When you're doing eight rounds of Swiss, and if you're out of the cut, you might get just be like, I'm tired. Yeah. I don't want to do this yeah, anymore. Like, the last game was a. A hard, hard slog, but uh, it's fine. And I, I think that it should be in the rules pack for a drop. All the drops lose any, they, they don't count as having participated in the event. I personally wouldn't give out prizing. Um, again, if it's a store kit and we've got enough that everyone who came can have one, fair enough, they can have it. Yeah. But to me, there's like the, there, there's that essence of well, why are they dropping? Like if it's oh, like a, yeah, like, if it's just like a rage quit, I'm not very sympathetic towards that. But if it's oh, my dad just got into an accident and I need to go now, yeah. then I have all the sympathy. Well, for that. as an example, yeah. when Kyle mm -hmm. dropped from the top eight, I would have had I been running the event. I've already told him this yeah. to his face that I would have been raging and that he wouldn't have got his range or he wouldn't have got anything. And yeah. it should have done it when ninth place was still worth to step up. But yeah. I would have preferred <laughs> to play a game rather than get a freebie. So yeah, oh, I would have taken a freebie. If I'd have, if it had conceded to me, I would have been okay. <laughs> I, I'd have been fine with it. It was just you raging because it was me that got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. These things have faces. It's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel it wriggling <laughs> in my stomach. Um, but yeah, I mean. That's the primary concern I have with Swiss events at the moment, is it's very hard to balance. I like, if I'm honest, I like the way, this is going to sound really stupid, but I like the way I used to run events for Warhammer or Warhammer 40k in the UK. I'd tell you up front in the rules pack how competitive of an event it would be. 
Yeah, and that's what they're trying to do with their, like, um, yeah. structure now. Like, uh, there are the more casual events, and then there's all the way up to the premiere events, right? But that's... I, I feel like that's a little different from yeah. the old 40k structure, just because... Oh, because there wasn't one. It was, yeah. like... Well, well, structure, in the sense that pretty much everyone... Every organizer out there had to come up with something because 40k was not playable, or even Warhammer, or Warhammer Fantasy was not really playable out of the box. Yeah, and I, I'm talking about sixth edition, seventh edition fantasy, third, fourth edition 40k when I was running stuff back there. With, with War Demons and the 3.5 Chaos Codex. Yeah. yeah. Doom yeah. Siren, Sunesh. Yeah. Uh, Flash Princes. Yeah. Well, no, it's. And I don't. I, I did fun events and I did competitive events as long as you know going in. And I feel like if yeah. you tell people this event is going to be a double elimination event after you've lost two games, sorry, get out. If they come anyway, they can't have anything to complain about. Yeah. If you showed up to something that says, we are going to try and kick your face in, you will be dealing with the Eldar, Death Star, uh, the Eldar, the Death Stars, the Quintuple Imperial Knights. Well, yeah. if you show up there with, or, like, or a even, Battle Force army and this, get you, your head kicked in, it's your fault. If you come in and aren't expecting to see, you know, for every... Worst why that stupid thing I just ran. If you're not expecting to see three pal bases and two jump masters for every not one normal list, that's your fault for not understanding the, the meta. meta. No. Like if I once you hit the store championship regional level, you should be expecting to see the meta lists. You should be expecting to see people who are in it to win. Yeah. But that's it. I feel as long as you actually are up front Again, it comes down to we spoke about it last time the social contract exactly. you have yeah. when you're playing a game. If I advertise a competitive level event and you don't come prepared for a competitive level event, that is not my fault as a TO. That is not your opponent flying a win at all costs list. That's you not put, you're playing in the wrong event, unfortunately. But equally, oh. I've had a case where. I have a specific example of we used to do in the Royal Air Force, we had a Royal Air Force War Gaming Association mm. and we had a championship weekend which the goal was to catch up with friends you'd not seen for six months, drink lots and lots of alcohol and push toy soldiers around the table and one year I was doing the 40k event and a guy brought a Leaf Blower Imperial Guard list, he'd never been before had no idea and I, we spoke, I took him aside and spoke to him and said look it's not really how the events run obviously you've not got anything else with you it's fine don't we're not having a go at you but if you're wanting to come and enjoy this type of event I'd recommend not doing this again yeah, yeah. and uh, it wasn't in an it was well, an did... adult conversation it yeah. wasn't a, a dig at him everyone who played him you know it wasn't a bad person it just well in not, the case you described like he'd never been so he didn't yeah. know what to expect and, and that's it it was just one of those like that yeah, is the you, problem with the whole won, social you've contract got the, you have the trophy well done take it back to your barracks it's, it's brilliant but if you come back next time and they're doing it again then yeah, now you know <laughs> yeah well, uh, you said that this was actually supposed to deal with U-boats as well. Uh, we haven't actually talked about any dealing, any method to deal with the brutal tactic lists, but you think that this has a decent shot at it? I do. Uh, again, matching the pilot skill with them, um, having more ships in them, and having a form of alpha strike. Obviously, you, I can fly in a tighter block than they can. Which theoretically, if I can outfly my again, I believe it's a skill mm -hmm. matchup. But the way I think of it is with that six ship block, if I can line up to make sure I only get, you know, a maximum of two torpedoes coming back at me, and the other guy is either out of arc or out of range, then I'm happy. I should only lose one Z, which will get to fire, mm -hmm. and then six shots which should include two torpedo uh, two, two missile missiles. backs and you have a very good chance of just removing one of them yeah 
And again, it's all on the initiative and how you fly it, and it's the fact that it's a skill matchup. But I wouldn't be. There's a chance it goes horribly wrong. I'm not going to lie to you. If you take yeah, well, this list and fly it down the jaws of <laughs> Jumpmaster, you Sometimes will have you just, games yeah. where three of them die round one and three of them die round two. You shake hands and, you know, I should have fought yes, differently. Yes, the, the thing is, it can go wrong for you much worse than it can go wrong for them. Yeah, and I'm under no illusion that it's a hard counter. Again, I actually don't think it's a hard counter to it's the Imperial best Aces. Counter. Uh, even to Imperial Aces, yeah, I don't think it's a game. hard counter. Aaron yes. didn't really have any idea how to deal with it now. Like, yeah. And it showed you what it can do to an unprepared player, but again, yeah. it's tournaments are always about preparation. You have to understand yeah. these things, you have to understand what to expect, and in a competitive event, this is what you have to, to figure out. What if people are building to counter the meta? Yeah, and there's, there's multiple things you can do. I imagine had I gone with this exact list, but Rebels, and now I'm using Blount and Concussion Missiles. Yeah, but... Then... The know, downside there is the lack of feedbacks. Yeah. So it's but a, again, against uh, U-Boats? No, that's better. Yeah. It's a much better counter to U-Boats. But much, then you but give then up the Aces matchup. You have to do the exact same thing here, is you destroy that shuttle and then block Vader until he's dead and hope you have enough ships left at the end that you have more points on the table than a fell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which isn't actually that hard. Without Palpatine, Fell is going to be very careful about how he engages, and you saw that I'll trade a range free shot with yeah. Fell, because I'm not going to damage him, but he might get one through on me, because he isn't going to spend his tokens Yeah, on not offense. on the shot, no. So, That's just a bad idea for him. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, in target lock focused attacks at range free. Yeah. Yeah, one of your health, it's only yeah. worth like four points. Yeah. His health, one point of his health is worth 11, yeah. so it's just not a good trade for him to do a trade and one for one. Like I said, Fel isn't going to want to drop in front of Blount and no. because Blount shoots, turns off his stealth device and yeah. gives everyone else a target lock. That's you, just not a smart. Then you fire your um, four concussion missiles at him. And that's goodbye, Fel. Yeah, and <laughs> bring it on, you know? Yeah, and then, well, as for the U-boat matchup in general, like, they are very susceptible to being blocked, and they're very susceptible to, frankly, anything with auto thrusters that manages to survive their alpha. Yeah. Uh, and they're actually not that huge a threat. Like, all the regional results we're seeing, they're not doing that well. People no. are turning up with them in droves and, like, to make the top 16. Uh, Ace is uh, much scarier. So if you can beat aces and do okay against U-boats, yep. there you go. Like, Dash has experienced quite the resurgence because of his ability to just get behind the um, dance around them and smack them in the face with an HLC while not being in their arc. I still worry about the support for Dash. I thought about, again, mm -hmm. taking the um, Blount and, and supporting cast, maybe going with Blount and then the other guys have an eye on missiles. Mm -hmm. um, but, the interesting thing that I saw, like out of the one regional that I was following this weekend, I was watching... Uh, I was, it was on the tabletop general stream. I forget exactly where it was. I believe yeah. it was Atlanta area. But there were three different dash base lists. One was supported by Chopper yeah. in the VCX. One was supported by Corin, the classic. Yeah. And one had Miranda with a bomb. And Sabine. Uh, yeah, I'll see. And I, I, I really like that one. Yeah, um, the other one I'll point out is we did discuss it before the show. Five A, five a Wings has now won two regionals. Yes. The, so mi the A Wing Crack Swarm. Yeah, adaptability and crack shot on five green yeah. squadrons. I really it's, like that thing's matchup because against Imperial Aces, once in a while they'll only just barely evade it and then you'll pop Fell Stealth Device and yeah. it will be sad. Yeah. And of course, it's five A wings, which is, as it's, my opponent saw, it's kind of a pain to remove. It, it's a similar concept to this yeah. one. You just you kill the shuttle. Yeah. There's just too much Vader. A wing to remove. Quickly. Yeah. You kill the shuttle. You kill Vader, and then Fell can't yeah. kill everybody. Yep. Yeah. But had I wanted to. Uh, you saw in this game, I didn't go hard on either one of the aces because I didn't want to put myself in a position to lose a ship needlessly. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing the first time I played it. 
uh, when I took seven, it was I was a bit too gung ho. I wanted to just kill everything. Whereas in this time, <laughs> it said I was in quite time, happy yeah. to push him to the outside of the table so I can take the inside track. Yeah. So that then, if he wants to cut in, you're getting feedback. Yeah, I, I think this time you want to, you both ways you want to play it fairly conservative. Yeah, but well. As for the aces versus U boat specifically, that one really does feel like a skill matchup because it's all about it's dodging got, the alpha strike. The they have all of the tools to do it because you're gonna have a minimum of one ship with auto thrusters. Yep. You're gonna have again. Or a ship that can't, or Omega Leader. Yeah. Right. What should happen is that you shouldn't lose a ship to a first torpedo. Yeah. That you never may happen. lose a ship to a second torpedo if you were bad. But then there are two torpedoes down, and hopefully you've almost killed at least one Jumpmaster. Yeah. You then kill the Jumpmaster in the next turn, a blocking... Or out of arc of one of them, so you're now taking one missile shot on an ace who's hopefully mm -hmm. got auto thrusters or no shots at all. Yeah, and he's having to do the turrets. It's about presenting them with that one torpedo shot that they want to take and hopefully dodging it. Yeah, um, because you, can't dodge you all of the arcs all of the time. Yeah, so the the goal is to bleed them of their torpedoes. Yeah. And, like I'm saying this as someone who probably will end up taking the jumpmasters as just the classic basic variant with the torpedo with the triple yeah. torpedoes to regionals but the trick is not to stop them from firing the torpedoes at the all it's the trick is to get them to fire the torpedoes when you want them to yeah. you want them to be in a bad position where they don't actually already have a target lock you want them to do it when you're at range three or obstructed because well they're, you have, and you have to get them, give them the impression they're not going to get another shot. So they're yeah. going to have to take the obstructed range 3 shot against auto thrusters. Yeah. And hope to push through a point. And of course, sometimes that's just not going to work out for you because you'll just go, haha, I'm rolling five dice with Fell. Oh, look, blank, 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 focus. Yeah. And he got four hits from a plasma. And you're just like, well, um, I guess I just eat them and die. Yeah, and I don't... Again, we'll bring it back to the TLT list in that it's a good list. It does what it does really well, but it doesn't do any more than that. You get in the variations on it now. Well, again, the initiative bid coming um, yeah, like the... down to 97, was it, for a bid? Yeah. Or you're getting... You know, there's so many different options and ways to do it. And... Personally, I'm not a fan of going down to a PS2 bump master. Mm -hmm. I think that's a trap, just because you're giving them an easy kill. It, it's yeah. something that you can't put torpedoes on it now, because if you do, they're going to kill it. If you don't put torpedoes on it, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's not a, a threat aside from yeah. being in the way. And like, while I kind of like the disruptive list, like sometimes just that ship doesn't have any damage, and the rest of your list has to work that much harder to kill things. Yeah. And so, it's useful against some lists, but sometimes they're just like, oh, I don't care about that thing, and they'll kill your real like workhorse pieces, and then you're stuck with a bump master against the, uh, things that outfight it. Yeah, uh, if you want to fly, you both listen to the last episode of Nova Squadron Radio. Mm -hmm. Uh, it goes into it. I've got that. Ryan Fleming, is it? A no, guy that's who uh, just for clarity. That's number forty-eight. Is uh, it? I'm gonna have to check. Forty-nine, I think. I'm gonna check now. I only just listened to it myself because I love listening to myself whine on about X <laughs> uh, Let me just pull it all up properly, so I'm not giving out duff information. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. Yeah, so episode forty-eight with Ryan Fleming. So, obviously he won the Hoff Open with them, mm -hmm. so he talks about the reasonings, and just to quote him, because I'm sure he won't mind the exposure, but he was saying that, you know, the best bump master is any of the three What's his with an initiative bid. Ah, uh, yes, So then, well. it doesn't matter which way around you go, if you've won the initiative bid against your mirror match, yep. you've got a bump master in any of the ships, so the one that's in the best position to do it, you bump with. 
Yep. And that's and a much better choice than hamstringing your list. I feel like that's actually one thing that people underestimate. It's like, you know what? You don't have to try and fire all your torpedoes at once. <laughs> like, I actually caught one of my opponents out with that because he assumed I would hang back with all three ships and go for torpedoes, but I actually threw one out there and was like, no, I'm actually just going to get in your way with this guy, and then the other two will torpedo you. Yeah. And I will primary weapon you with this guy. And that's what my hope with this is that I don't have to actually fire the homing missiles. The threat yeah, they're of there. the homing missiles. And that's actually one of the things about the torpedoes as well. Because it creates this whole, this whole arc where your opponent does not want to be. And yeah. your opponent is thinking about that because they're worrying, oh, I don't want to get shot by torpedoes. Uh, and they're thinking, oh, the best way to not get hit by them is never let them fire, but... That's not going to happen in a realistic yeah. game, especially on something with a, with a white sloop. It's yeah. going to shoot. And uh, in that game, though, I wind up, and had he not presented me with such a good zap opportunity on Vader, <laughs> I, I honestly thought he was going to turn away and get out, and I, I, he'd have zero shots at me other than the shuttles. And instead he sat right in front of you. Yeah, yeah. so, but had he done that, my entire plan was I'm going to shoot the primary weapons from the front three who ended up zapping Vader to see if I needed to fire my missiles. But when Vader just... Was, I did it the other way around because I had the opportunity to Vader do. just presented you a perfect target to knock three of his health off for, for almost nothing. <laughs> well, for, oh, I've got a turn of going one forward. Yeah, I know. I, almost nothing. It's like, oh no, I went one forward, hit you, and stopped. Yeah. I am so sad. It's because yeah. I just... Cook. And I will point out that I actually missed that formation horribly <laughs> because I you instead of using my one, I used the uh, range one template instead of my one forward to do my spacing. Uh, so yes. I, uh, it's, a little, it's a little thinner. So yeah, it's not quite I, just, and I knew it as I was doing it, but I was like, "Oops, oh, I'll be okay." And I wasn't. Oops. <laughs> Those couple millimeters matter. Uh, it did, but. It was, a, and it wasn't even just that one where they all banked, it was from then on, they couldn't do all of the same move all the time. Well, I mean, sometimes you why, lose the game at deployment. Yeah, not that time. Yeah. <laughs> you hamstrung yourself a little, but you didn't yeah. lose it at least. I made sure that the ones with missiles were going to get reactions, and that's all that matters. And it really was, and well... Scouts no. do not like IGs. No, I it's I don't. I think it's a single-digit percentage for the scouts, yeah. simply because the IGs have the auto thrusters, they have the glitter stim, they have the superior pilot skill, the actions, and the fact that they're usually packing twin heavy laser cannons, yeah. which will probably remove a jump master in two turns, yeah. and you almost cannot remove unless you unless their green dice significantly betray them or they misplay it, you will not remove an IG with with three torpedoes. All right. For that specific matchup, I've been thinking about m messing around with the torpedoes and stuff like that. Maybe I don't know. It's a hard one, but I don't. I feel that's like one where you don't want to fire the torpedoes too early. I'd take a turn of taking HLC shots to then. Yeah, try the, and bump with the one that they damaged. Yeah. The problem is because they move after you and they've yeah. got the reactive boost, and it's they have such a diverse style. It's kind of hard to predict what they're going to do. Again, it, it can be very difficult to set up, and it, it's like it's from the perspective of the scouts, it's just like fighting the aces matchup in terms of what you want to do. You need to make sure you have a ve you need to make sure your torpedo shots count. Yeah. But the problem is, unlike most of the extant aces builds, like the standard Vader Fell build does not actually do a lot of damage quickly. No. But two IGs with two HLCs hit hard and fast. Yeah. Which their damage output is above that of the aces builds usually. Yeah. So that is the problem for the scouts, because the IGs can actually burst you down. You need to actually fly it well. Yeah. Um, like, it, again, it comes down to you're the one who has to know the line, getting the blocks and controlling the engagement. And not necessarily trying to yep. go around as a wolf pack. That's where you want to yep. you need to spread, draw them spread out, out, pull them apart. If you can force the IG player to split his IGs, you're on to a winner. Dice dependent. The thing is, so, like, as long as these dice are not ever bad, yeah. you probably lose that matchup as scouts. Like, it's a very high chance well, of losing. Again, I, like, I don't. I think it's probably statistically one of the worst matchups out there for scouts. I think you've got to get them in arc and range two. 
which yeah not everyone not all three of them are going to have that shot every turn yeah so you've just got to balance when you're going to use the ordnance again don't just go again, oh, i've got him at range yeah. three i'm going to fire everything the try downs, and wait yeah. for the range two yeah. ordnance shot the downside is though they'll have glitter stim for the early turn where that happens and that in of itself is as powerful as auto thruster statistically is yeah. a little actually more powerful yeah. than auto thruster statistically or sorry no it's a little less powerful than auto thruster statistically but it will apply on every single attack yeah. regardless and if they do that for a turn and remove one of your jump masters you're already so far behind you don't have enough torpedo shots left to do it and the problem is yeah. again because they can because the two hlcs allow them to deal damage so quickly you have to take like it feel it it's very difficult to conserve the torpedoes because you may actually just lose a jump master that still has munitions on it yeah because of their target selection the thing you have to look at is that the igs lose hard to aces yeah so so it's playing the match if you if locally more people are bringing igs you bring aces instead of scouts. Like, that's why that's why aces are as pop prevalent as they are at the moment. Yeah, and I feel like that's actually what happened to Toth Open because the three most common archetypes at, were the triple jump master, the all paces or some imperial aces variant, and then the brobots. Yeah. The thing is, the brobots were third by a significant margin, and Paul paces were second by an even more massive margin. Jump masters were incredibly prevalent at that event. But Apart from only the two table. of them made yeah. top eight because I feel like the IGs preyed on so many of them that yeah. they just could not make the cut because they, they'd run into an IG and lose and then run into another. Like, they'd lose one other matchup on, like, skill yeah. or something and then just lose an IG matchup yeah. and then be out of contention. Yeah. But, and allowing the Paul Paces to thrive. Well, if it's, I don't think... I don't buy into a full... Rock, paper, scissors that we had when it was um, the Swarm beat Falcon, whispers. Falcon yeah. beats Whisper, Whisper beats Swarm. Yeah. I don't buy into it being that rock, paper, yeah, scissors. Yeah, it, it, it's not that bad, but... I mean, another thing you need to look at is the wider pool. Is that five A-wings have won two regionals? Yeah, that's, the thing is the five A-wings are good against all of those things. Yeah, because but people need to look at what else is yeah. out there? Yeah, I guess the IG specifically. Like, the A-Wings will, again, they will slowly bleed the damage through. Because a lot of the time, because they only want to shoot an arc. Like, the A-Wings, they're small. There's a lot of them. They'll be able to block the IGs. You, you they'll be saw... able to turn around and get some of them with, like, a range 2 shot to turn off auto thrusters. Uh, even Rich, which, bless him, new, I say, he's been playing for three weeks. This is a guy who played in game one, if you weren't here. <laughs> he was uh, able to get around to give his small base fell shots on the IG whilst denying the IG its shots back. Yeah. And this is someone who's been playing three weeks. Yeah. You know? Admittedly, he's coming from like a wargaming background that yeah. has him good at like oh, understanding not, position. I, but I don't doubt still, it'll it's be only a good like, player. The fact that he like he's still adapting to the different set of rules because yeah. in War Machine and Warhammer, you get to go, oh, I'm going to put my on my tape measure and go, I want to go this many inches this way. Yeah. And that's the benefit you have flying small bases over large. Your, your yeah, you base can go places. Smaller. Yeah, yeah, you can There's, go places that the big ships can't. You're not as quick, or the turn like the one hard isn't quite as stupid. Yeah, you don't have the ability to cover the same amount of absolutely ridiculous yeah. distance through like a action movement, yeah. but you do have the ability to go places and get in the way that they can't. Match. I'm just going to throw yeah. out there that we still have 20 people watching after we've already said we're not watching <laughs> another game. You guys are awesome. Yeah, well, they want to hear what we think because yeah. they know I've won something with U-boats maybe, I don't know. It's uh, like, oh, ask it someone who won with them how to kill them? Like, it can't be me. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, it's good. Um, I, I want to try different things. I don't... I really... I want to put... Um, going to be playing more X-Wing so hopefully I'll get to try more I'm confident that you know the Z-Swarm can do work I feel that a, a, a blind weave blower type rebel list can do work um, 
The A wings, evidently, are doing well. It's because you can't remove the annoying little bastards. Like if, <laughs> the way they fight the IGs, they probably just like go defensive and wait for shots that they have auto thrusters on, yeah. or they don't have that the IG does isn't defending with auto thrusters on. Yeah. And then they slowly bleed them. Like against the jump masters, like if you can survive the torpedo strikes with like three of your A wings up, they they can't kill you anymore, and you slowly and you slowly chip them to death. That was what r convinced Rich to buy an Aces West, was yeah. he ran his three U-bolts into Greg Jackson, and Greg was running <laughs> Tycho, Kian, and Ezra, just as a, uh, I think he calls it, Frankie says, relax, mm -hmm. and it is, they just, they don't care about having stress, and it was just a fun list. So basically, all he did, <laughs> I take it you were talking about poutine earlier. Yes. <laughs> We weren't quite talking about it today, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, Ezra died, Kian died, and then Tycho flew around, and if Greg had been going hard, probably would have won the game with Tycho against the three Jumpmasters, because they had fired all of her ordnance. If they're not going um, to remove you're an not going, with You're turrets. not going to remove a raging Tycho, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Like, the key to beating the jump masters is surviving their ordnance strike with something with three green dice and auto thrusters. Yeah. And then they can't kill you. And hopefully you you manage to bleed them enough points that you win. Um, and so of course, if your whole list is stuff that has three green dice and auto thrusters, then they really struggle to remove you at all. I also, I've not got the list down yet, so I can't give you the exact mm -hmm. list, but one thing I've been thinking about is a, a Vader Decimator with two Barons of the Empire being a good, being in a good place in this, in the meta currently, so I feel that a Vader Decimator crushes aces, the, yep. the two Barons will do a massive amount of work against U-Bolts. But I'm, I, I'm not too sure on the points levels just yet. I've not sat down and made the list. Last week when we were doing the TIE Advanced Prototype show, yeah. obviously I ran my Inquisitor, Whisper and Juno list. That was the other list I wanted to try, but I hadn't, because of life happening last week and me not getting the chance, I've not managed to sit down and, and uh, hammer out the details when yeah. you want to sit down and make the list properly. Oh dear. Yeah, I mean, there are there are solutions to jump masters. They're not as scary as everyone thought they were and two weeks ago. And that's something and I think that the the list at the moment, as you say, would be IGs are always are forever going to be a thing. Yeah, they're always going to be one of those like uh, tier two lists that you have to be ready for. Uh, tier one point five. Uh, okay, think, tier one point five because they will always sit there. They'll never yeah. be the best West in the game anymore, but... Once in a while, something will be considered to be the best list, like yeah. the Jumpmasters, and then the IGs will just horribly murder it over and over again. Whisper. But... Whisper. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> because you're all British about it. Juno, Whisper, and the Inquisitor. <laughs> all of them with adaptability. No, I believe that... Obviously, Whisper has veteran instincts and an advanced cloaking device, fire control system, and a recon specialist. The Inquisitor, however, had adaptability, auto thrusters, and the Thai V1 title. Uh, keep in mind we are on a bit of a stream delay, so you guys are actually hearing stuff a few seconds after we've said it, so we don't necessarily have the best grasp on when you're trying to make a and, clever comment. And it's late. <laughs> uh, it's not really late, but I just had to play a game of a six ship swarm, which I haven't done for a while, so that's actually quite mentally taxing, trying to like, yeah. fox a Vader, admittedly with no engine, yeah. which I was thankful for, and um, trying to Keep Sutnir. Sutnir. I can't, I always get. Sutnir. that's the one. Sutnir fell. I always call him Sutnir, which is wrong. 
that one I do miss. <laughs> I was reading. I was reading it this morning to try and get it in my head. So I stopped getting it wrong. Just call him Baron Fell. The Baron of the Empire Fell. <laughs> well, he is a Baron of the Empire. I mean, after he he helped kill the convoy at Dera Four, he got all that all that sweet sweet street cred. It, but it yeah, has like... the same blood stripes as Han. Both the same Actually, Italian. I don't believe he was awarded the Corellian blood stripes. Like those aren't actually the Corellian blood stripes. No, it's just no, um, it's the yellow ones. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, the blood stripes are on the pants. Yeah. Spell doesn't have them because he's not a Corellian hero. He's an Imperial hero. Yeah. I need to fly him. I need to get good at flying him because I, I probably. Should you just don't understand? I, I'm actually probably I'll be okay with him, but I'm too scared to actually try and fail abysmally with the best ship in the Imperial fleet. Well, see, what you should have just done is go is like back in Wave Two when he's new, then play him a ton. That's what that's what I did. I probably, Clearly, time travel is your solution. See, I sold all of my stuff when I moved to Canada, so I missed a Wave Two into Wave Three. And then I bought back in when I was here, when the, uh, just after Imdar Alpha. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. When I used to run events for you at Myth Games. Yeah. Now you run events for me when I actually turn up. <laughs> Isn't that often? <laughs> Stupid X Wing, such a Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so it goes. Yeah. Okay, guys, we've rambled on for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently Chris is running out of steam, so we're yeah. probably going to have to say goodnight. Yeah, I feel, well, we've given you an extra 20 minutes on what we said we were going to do, so I hope you've all enjoyed the show. Uh, I'll see if I can throw up our funky graphic again to see us out, and then we'll say goodnight. Yeah.